Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, and so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show. Booyah! Hey! 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 hey. <laughs> Weird crew today. Hey, we got this camp. <laughs> right? This camp just keeps switching up, bro. I just keep coming in, uh-huh. and it's different people every single week. Like yeah. Mike Polk's in. He got he got his journal ready to go. This is my golf book the, joke. You got the golf book. I got. I'm gonna start us off hot. Okay. With one of these golf jokes by Bob Lonigan. <laughs> Make us laugh. Hey, golf and sex are about the only two things you can enjoy without being very good at. <laughs> There's plenty more to come, folks. Stick around. Hey, I'm not going to lie. I, I feel like I wasn't very good at that until like, like 28 or something. I just felt like I didn't know what I was doing, bro. I do not excel at either. <laughs> well, I, I can't say the same. You, know? <laughs> yeah, are you a good golfer, are you? You know, the golfing thing is, oh, okay. I can't relate it to my other activities. I totally you know, understand. It's like night and day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Tyvis, yeah. you know, you, what, what you got on today, Tyvis? Oh, you know, today I got a little... Stranger Things shirt on, you know, little, little, okay. little thing. And then, uh, of course, the shoe game, since I'm on my streak where I won't repeat, I decided to go a little Fear of Gods today. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fear of God. Okay. I, see, <laughs> I told him I had seen those. Oh, there it is. Yes. I had seen those. They was they only came in the off-white sides of my, my color, you know what I'm saying? It was just it's 15. Not your yeah, 15s, they be having, like, two <laughs> colors. Black and white, and they don't even be really, it be that right. New Balance, more Walker white. Like, yeah. Like, it's it's sizes and prejudice. It is. What's you the, should have clothes available in your size. What's the, the month time? that is you, you coming for vengeance? Oh, September, I'm coming. Okay. Hey, man, right, count that down. September is coming, man. The Ides of March, but it's September, though. Okay. Like, we ready to go. I got <laughs> McNuggets. <laughs> I got, I listen, I spent all my rent money. <laughs> I ain't paid student loans in weeks. Y'all better give me, y'all better get me up out of here, bro. G, are you, um, I noticed you didn't ask me about my outfit. Uh, yeah, um. I'm wearing the classic Odell Brown shirt <laughs> as in remember when we had him yeah, yes. as you can see hey, and listen, I'm, I'm wearing give you credit with, for with that. shoes Thank with you. the shoe I'm wearing the classic Sacconi brown shoes to match with some paint on the shoelaces from a paint thing that I did earlier. I don't even know what project that was. Can I borrow them? What's that? Yeah, you can can put these on. Absolutely. I went with no socks. There are no no no-seams in there. It is a mess downstairs right now, everybody. Hey, we've talked about taking bull shoe shopping with you, G. Mm -hmm. One day we just got to do a wardrobe swap here. I need Tyvis in the Odell shirt. I need Polk in the Air Force One. Yeah, can't, Tyvis got on. I can't upset my fans. Like I, that's, I can't. Only Mike can pull that. This off. is true. I, I, this is the traditional Ohio City look, right? <laughs> uh huh. So it has to look like you was like either running mm-hmm. or doing something at the crib, right? Or you look like I just put everything on I and mean, just didn't even like think there was about a it. fire alarm. Yes, and, and I just, just left my apartment. Yeah, and I just, just have grab to whatever them. you could grab. Yep. You just threw it on. And the more random you are, the more credit they're like, yeah, this guy, he's one of those guys. He That's just true. Does he just doesn't. <laughs> well, you well, get you get us. That's yeah, I like. get you. I get you. Well, let, well listen, there's something I don't get. I, I, I don't understand uh, what's going on with Deshaun Watson, and it's and it's crazy because they've told us. This is an expedited process, Mm -hmm. right? Expedited to me, as we were talking uh, before the show, expedited to me means like two, three days at tops. Yeah. What the heck is going on? And do you think this thing kind of is going to linger on until halfway through the preseason, Tyvis? I I could see it doing that because now we're hearing that the the NFLPA wants to have a hearing because they want to be able to tell their side of the story. So uh, if that's the case, you got to think it's going to go at least another week. So Deshaun Watson's a pro- I was thinking before that, before hearing that, that it would come out maybe Thursday, right before the preseason, first right. preseason. But now that they're doing that, I mean, it's got to go next week, right? I, I, for me, I, I just don't, I don't understand. Like, I, I, I get that the Players Association wants to come in and, and kind of give their oral Oh, yeah, so it's about, it's about time. Yeah, or about time. They say, <laughs> well, we might, we, we might want to go ahead and say something. Um, uh, this is from Aaron Wilson on, uh, is he from NFL Network? 
He works at a couple different places. Okay, uh, well, he, he has a check mark, so I'll read his comments. Uh, <laughs> NFL Players Association would like to uh, for designee Peter C. Harvey to conduct a hearing and appeal of Deshaun Watson disciplinary matter per a league source. Whether Clark will hold one <coughs> or instead rely upon written responses to make the decision remains un, um, unresolved per source. Now, Mike, I, I don't – do you expect to get anything – different from Peter C. Harvey that you don't expect to get already? That's the thing that is weird about this taking any amount of time, really. First of all, expedited is subjective, obviously. You said to you it's two or three days. It's just, uh, unfortunately, as with most of these things, it's not how things work. It's not what we think it should be. It's whatever the hell they think their process should be and whatnot. But what's weird about this taking any kind of a period of time is the fact that he can't look at any new evidence. Yeah. The only evidence that he can look at is this stuff that our, our girl Sue has already examined thoroughly, and this is what she came up with. Really, the only thing that he can be looking at is stuff that she's already seen, and then she can try and argue with that. Or he can think about how, how her sentencing uh, should have been different than, in his opinion than it is. And then I guess he can make an adjustment there. But it's not like he's talking to new, new uh, witnesses. It's not like he's looking at any kind of new evidence that she didn't see. So it's like what really is – it took her 10 days to make her decision, really. Like once, she ha once everything was done. Mm -hmm. And if it take, why would it take him longer with, when it's the exact same evidence? That's my question. I, I, I... Never. I look at it like this. I look at it like this in terms of I, I just think they just doing it for optics like they, they're like, well, listen, we have to make it look like you're not completely biased on this. one. <laughs> so yeah. take your time. If Sue took 10 days, you at least got to take six. I do wonder what the union, though, thinks they can get by presenting in front of this. I, I don't that's get the it. part. That that's I don't another mean. one. I, I don't know. <laughs> like they got essentially already from her what they considered to be the best case scenario sentence. Now, the only place it's going to go when you have somebody who is picked by the NFL and when the NFL is the only one who are going to make this ruling in the end, the only thing they can get is worse. So it's not like they're going to come in and like put on some pageant and all of a sudden he's just going to be like, you know, I never thought of it that way. No games. No. That's not going to happen. <laughs> I, 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 that's what, I'm, that would I'm be saying, nice. That would yeah. be, be crazy to hear somebody. <laughs> you talk about it up, Rory. You know, you know he just like <laughs> stands up, slow claps him. That's the best presentation <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> you are not punished at all. In fact, I'm going to give you money from last year. That, on a, that wouldn't even happen on Game of Thrones. Man. <laughs> like they could like, I don't understand what they expect literally Tyvis from being like you just stood in front of the other judge and get poured your heart out <laughs> right you gave him all you had right? uh-huh you, she gave you six games and it's like oh that was nice of y'all get <laughs> hey we gonna bring that right back uh -huh. with another dude why wouldn't you just say let's go ahead and file the paperwork <laughs> let him go ahead and cancel it out and just keep it pushing why wouldn't you just hey, you we both sides I think know where they want to go yeah I just feel like they're just doing these pleasantries like for formality. Uh, yeah, it's definitely, it, 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 unfortunately, this whole situation has been about optics. How does it look in the public eye? The NFLPA already made the terrible decision by putting that statement out before they even got the ruling. So to go back on that, it would look bad. So I think that's why they just let the six games stand, even though they should have fi filed that appeal on that. But they let that chance slip away. Now that we're moving on to this, I, it's nothing that the NFLPA really can do at this point. A step race to Delaware like Brad say and, and get ready to file that because outside of that you already didn't let the NFL just completely wipe you down this whole process and, and Mike <laughs> even even with the, the thing about him saying run to the to Delaware the way that works is I guess that you you want to definitely go to a place where there's a more liberal leaning court yeah. uh, and I believe uh, Sue Robinson and we'll, we'll ask um, our, our guest that's coming on um, he'll talk about it a little bit Sue Robinson is from Delaware and a lot of people that she kind of worked with are in this court circuit to trying to get it to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's like a it's a it's a race though. Like so basically what happens when a league hits go on the email. Yeah. It's like okay the first person to get to where they want to go. They have the precedent. They get to have the, the court trial there. So obviously they want to go to the Southern District of New York, mm -hmm. but I don't know how they're even going to get a head start on the league because it's the league that's filing the, the grievance. Why would they know before them? First of all, can we mention what a perfect system it is that we're, we can like try and pick around and try and figure, find a judge or a jury or a situation <laughs> where it's like, you know who I'd like to be in front of as far as a jury and a judge? Like, just that's so ridiculous that's that that, crazy, is, that, right? that is our system. Like, that, uh, you know, I guess everything's totally equal. But uh, I just remembered when you were talking about that 
uh, and and Apollo, and talking about how the NFL union shouldn't have put that statement out right afterwards. I just got grossed out retroactively thinking about the Haslam's putting out that letter and just acting like everything was over. And then it, and I just remembered that. I guess I'd repressed it or it got lost in the shuffle. And I was just, but they put out a thing saying, we know he regrets it. And it's like, even before the final decision was done, what are they, what are they, why did they do that? Everybody was, I, I told, to I be, yeah. I be telling people all the time, listen, it never does you any good to say anything. I'm going to tell you right now. If I ever get in trouble, God forbid, I'm not ever talking to y'all. They'll be like, I ain't seen G. Bush in weeks. You won't see me. Mm-hmm. It's going to be some white guy out there saying, trust me, Mr. Bush, it sticks in Mr. Bush. He, he, he hangs to his innocence uh-huh. uh, and, and the facts will be out and he will, will be vindicated by those facts. And you're just sitting emotionlessly next to him. Yeah. Well, actually, no, I, I don't even want to see I'm my say, face. I'm about to say, I'm not even going to be in there. I'm going to go out with a ski mask on every I'm, day. I'm, I'm in jail. <laughs> basement yeah, I mean, tell you uh, is there any is there any uh, I, I'll say this is there any chance that they're prolonging this to continue to negotiate or do you think that the both sides are on scorched what, earth at this point and they're beyond the negotiation what is process? what is there to, why would the NFL negotiate if the ball is in their court the whole time Right. What's the point? Why would we negotiate? I think they'd like this to be over with. And I think that, I mean, yes, they do have the Whatever hammer. Whatever they, they say ha- it is. I know, but they have the hammer. But when you use the hammer, then there are repercussions that come with that. Well, uh, the, if because, we, if we, you we, know, we, that's not, they care about public sentiment. They care about what people think. Or they care about what their fans think of them. And they don't want to, as much as they are the villain, they want to not look like the villain as much as possible. And they would like to try and save some face. And if that, uh, that's why I do believe that they're probably negotiating through all of this. I really do. I don't think uh, you so. don't, you don't think I you, don't. Because it's all about optics. If six games was too light, 12 games ain't going to be enough. Everybody wants an indefinite but if, suspension. And if they're into optics, like everybody, Everybody say that that's what they're going to get. But if they can avoid going to federal court over this, I think they would very much prefer that. Would I would think that? they would too. So if that means negotiating, <laughs> even though you know that you can win. If that means negotiating, if it goes to court, you know that you can win. But if that means you can settle this now out of court and not have to deal with so that and not a- air out some possibly air out some owners' dirty laundry and stuff, I mean they've got a little bit of a threat hanging over them too to, to wrap this up as soon as possible. What is a, a a great negotiation? What do you think is common? Like what's a fair middle ground? Yeah, yeah. I think that I don't I don't know, but I'm sure that they're going to be talking about. I'm sure every all these owners are pissed off because they don't, they've uh, the guys gonna, not going to lose a nickel this year or he's barely going to lose anything. <laughs> okay. They could hit we'll him up for more money, slap I'll him up with a fine, maybe maybe. They'll say two more games, something like that. I so think eight gonna, games, fine. And so maybe. Treatment, treatment. I, I mean, I could see them offering that, and I could see them looking at that and taking it. Let me offer y'all a deal. Let's play. Let's make a deal. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. <laughs> All right. With, gonna, with other people's lives. Let's, other, do it. <laughs> let's play. Let's make a deal with other people's lives <laughs> in the future. Yeah. Now, this is so if, easy. If I'm Deshaun Watson, he how, how I'm gonna phrase this is. I think the NFL wants to wants to make him realize that no, you gonna have to show contrition. Mm-hmm. You gotta go ahead and plea bargain down and say, look, bro, I made some missteps. I'm gonna get better. Blah blah mm-hmm. blah. That's the statement they want. Gotta go to therapy and, with Dr. Phil yeah, for a while. All that, all that. You gotta sit on the couch sure. and do yep. all that stuff. All right. Now, if he says, here's what I'm gonna do for you. Let me sit up for this. <laughs> here's what I'm gonna do for you. Now I know y'all want me. Y'all mad about that contract. You're a little salty for that. Yep. Uh, Dan Snyder just got fined 10 million, Mm -hmm. right? Now that seemed like a lot of money because he's a billionaire. Here's what I'm going to do. What if I say I'm going to give you back in a fine, the highest fine anybody's ever been fined in the history of the game, right? Since it's unprecedented. Judge Sue Robinson Mm -hmm. said unprecedented unprecedented, and it it was egregious. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you Starting at $10 million, I'll give you $10 million fine. It's never been done in the league. No players association has games? ever got that fine. I'm going I to I'm gonna give you, <laughs> I'm going to give you six to 10 million and I'll go to eight games. Hmm. Eight and 10 million. Eight, treatment? eight and 10 million. Treatment? And, 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 and the treatment and all that cool. And I'll issue a statement after it's all done saying that I got to work on some things and basically admit to that. Make nuggets, you look like you want to take that deal. I don't know if I'm taking that deal, but I want, I want to throw another deal at you guys. I'm ready. I haven't heard this been talked about yet. Oh, I kind of thought about it as you were saying this, Oh, G. man. <laughs> what if the NFL comes back and says, we're going to give you 25 games and a $10 million fine? 
Including but last year? time served. So it's eight games this year. 25 games would be the longest suspension ever handed out in NFL games-wise. They've never done a 25-game suspension. So the people from the outside who don't know all the details say, oh, my goodness, it's the longest suspension ever. It fits that public narrative they came down with the hammer. But it's only eight games this year plus the fine. So you're offering the exact same thing that he just offered, but disguised <laughs> but just, a little bit better. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Just, yes. Wording and, it differently in a way that may please well, the public perception. What, what I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> that the problem is the public perception is going to say he chose to sit out of well, last well, year's well, games. He didn't, it, well, he didn't well, have here, to. So here's, what we could, here's the way they could couch that. When you were on trial, right, and, and you have to sit in jail, they don't give you bail. That's they give you service. credit for time served because yeah. you're sitting there. You're not doing nothing. Right, so they say I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you 12 years uh, in federal penitentiary, but you stayed on for a year and a half. I'm gonna give you credit for 19, 18 months time served. Okay, I think you could because you the league could say, oh, you didn't know it, but you was already suspended back then. Yeah. You, 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 you didn't really even know it. You you thought you was getting away with that, but that's that that really wasn't what it was. I think that I think the optics of that is everybody. The backlash is going to be that he chose to sit out because he didn't want to play for the Texans. It wasn't because he was punished. But I agree. I, I think that would be it. You're going to give him the you say 25 is the longest anybody's ever been suspended and 10 million is the most anybody's ever been fined. Yeah, Andy, I go to I mean, I think it's transparent to anybody who knows even <laughs> any of the facts whatsoever. Obviously, it doesn't. I guess it doesn't hurt. It might be just the only reason that I might not want to do that is because it's almost insulting to people to pretend like be like. And plus, we're going to suspend you for that whole last year when you sat out voluntarily, huh? Anybody? Maybe. It feels a little bit like <laughs> well, che- a little bit uh, we'll, cheap. We'll ask Charles Robinson, who's coming up right now, yep. if that might actually work for him. Can Can he get off on that? We'll see. It's one of my better ideas, maybe. But uh, Charles Robinson is joining us now from Jets Camp or at least in a hotel somewhere in the New York, New Jersey area. It's brought to us by the Gridiron Guys Hotline. Are you looking for a local roofer you can trust? Family-owned since 2003, the Gridiron Guys have grown to become Northeast Ohio's top-rated roofers. They exemplify quality work practices and are a valued resource for homeowners and offer 10-year workmanship warranties. Call 330-573-7967 today for a free estimate or roof inspection. Grid, 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 <laughs> Gridiron Guys is he in a bank? <laughs> like, yeah, that's like he's <laughs> he's in he's in a Manhattan vault somewhere, bro. Who's that? He should be. Happy. That was great. They got a friend me all over there now. Well, let's get Charles in here. Hey, right over to Sean Watson Charles, we appreciate news. you drop dropping in. It's the second time we we talked, right? Yeah, that was some serious production dollars right there. That, that <laughs> little shot Nothing the but bank. the best. <laughs> Nothing but the best on this show. Now, um, Charles, we started off our show. Um, kind of asking a question, you know, the league says this was supposed to be an expedited thing. Um, they, they give it to Harvey and, and now he's, he has the case and he's looking at it and now the, now the NFL players association is trying to say, okay, well maybe we want to give you an oral report, not the written version. Uh, and, and I don't quite understand. Maybe you could break this right. down to us. Why the heck are they doing all these pleasantries? Like we kind of know what Harvey wants to do. We, the league has been saying that they want to sm- put the hammer down, put the gavel down on them, but now all of a sudden they're slowing it down, going through this process. I- is it just for show, or are they really negotiating? Well, I think the facts of the uh, the interesting thing is you mentioned it. The facts of the case aren't going to change, right? I mean, they've already submitted briefs um, the first time through, and you can't really relitigate those things once again. That's not what this part of the appeals process is about you've moved past the litigation phase. This is, for lack of a better term here, the sentencing phase. You're trying to figure out what is the the punitive damage. And the only, I've asked this question, and I think the only answer I've gotten that makes some sense to me is this idea that if you get in front of Harvey and you go through this procedure of oral arguments, perhaps something could occur either on the part of the NFL or with Harvey that would open up some element of future litigation there that basically you're looking for a hanging thread to pull um down the line but i i've i get a lot of the same sort of responses that are similar to what you're saying is like why like why at this point are you going to go through um additional arguments when that phase is really present anything new um it's it's sort of like remember you know a few good men when uh demi moore says i strenuously object well, you can just object. You can't strenuously object. Mm-hmm. You get one shot at it, and, and just because you stand up and say it again isn't necessarily going to change the outcome. 
Is there any, do you think there is a way that, you know, neither side wins in this? So is there a, a punishment yeah. that the NFL doesn't get the what they want and Deshaun doesn't get the one he wants? What's the common ground in there that you think is both sides will look can go away and the optics won't be as bad? Yeah, I, I what's interesting about this. I'm actually working on a story right now. I had a chance to over since Friday. I talked to three different sources who are involved in this in varying aspects. And just said, give me a thumbnail of kind of where we're at, all the parties, how's everybody feeling coming out of last week? And then, you know, where is this moving forward? And, and one said something pretty interesting to me, and I, I, I really like the way that he sort of phrased it. He said, look, we're now to the most important person in this process in terms of the, this collectively bargained process. Peter Harvey doesn't have to listen to anybody. I know he's Roger Goodell's designee and he has league ties and all these different things, but he said, look, um, he gets to decide in a way that there's no appeal. He, unlike Sue Robinson, he doesn't have to worry about something boomeranging at this stage. So he can come up with an equitable ending to this, and this is using his words, um, that can make both parties walk away. And and really, that is, at least from this particular source, they, you know, he said that's where the power is at this point. You can come up with something that doesn't leave everybody happy. And he called it a zone of compromise. And he, he kind of said, look, it's sort of a fairy tale to have a zone of compromise where everyone's happy. He said, but at the very least, if you can reach a judgment where, sure, maybe everyone's dissatisfied, but it is a judgment that forces both sides to just say, we're walking at this point, we're going to walk away and, and move on. Um, that's really where this process can still work. Charles, two-part question. First of all, do you agree that the only picture we have of Peter J. Harvey, it kind of looks like he's in disguise? Yes. <laughs> doesn't he kind of look, look, doesn't he look like he's hiding from something? He looks like he and Inspector Gadget's boss. Doesn't he a little bit? <laughs> he definitely, you know, I was like, okay, yeah, this, you know, this, this looks like someone with league ties who, yeah. you know, it, it, like if you had said like, hey, give me a, a, a sketch of a Roger Goodell, uh -huh. designee. I would have been like, yeah, this looks like an arbitrator for the yep. NFL. He looks like a guess who character. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> okay, that's the first part of my question. The second part, I feel like part of the problem with this that we're having is that there just isn't a lot of precedent along the lines when it comes to a, a situation like this. And we can't make a direct comparison and say, well, he should be punished this much because of this, and he should be punished this much because based on this precedent. What are, do you, th what do you think kind of, what cases what precedent cases do you think they are considering and they have to take into consideration uh, from past nfl incidents that will influence their final decision well the problem is there isn't any precedent and it, and that's part of what arose out of the sue l robinson decision was that even she said when you're talking about something that she termed you know non non-violent she said when you look at the precedent in those cases um it's a three-game suspension now, you're asking for something completely unprecedented, which is a one-year um, indefinite suspension. And she ended up applying a six-game suspension with the precedent for that is domestic. It's the domestic violence policy in which there has been violence in those cases where there was a six-game suspension. Um, so what's interesting about that sort of splitting, she's, she's not going to go, hey, the full year indefinite, but she's also not going to lean on precedent and say, hey, in other past cases, where there have, have been like a, an element of a nonviolent infraction, it's a three game suspension. I'm landing at this six. She put in her decision, she talked about lack of fair notice. Okay. And when she said lack of fair notice, she's looking at the NFL and she's saying, You're trying to change something here in terms of your punitive outcome, what you want the suspension to be, without really giving fair notice to the, the individuals who it would apply to. And I think if you're Harvey, you could if, if Harvey were to reduce this, he would say, OK, um, precedence, three games. Even Sue Robinson says precedence, three games. So ultimately, this is going to be reduced by three games. No one really expects that's going to happen. I mean, they expect it's going to go the opposite, but potentially not the, the full uh, one year indefinite suspension. So it's. The, the previous arbitrator, she laid it out there for everybody. She said, this is unprecedented. What you're asking for is unprecedented. What I'm doing is unprecedented in a way. Um, and that really three games appears to to apply here. You're trying to change it. I'm only willing to take it to this degree of six games. And even that precedent isn't a perfect fit. Now Peter C. Harvey has to decide whether or not he wants to move even further beyond that 
and and set a different kind of precedent. Yeah, Charles, I'm not sure if you saw this this morning or not, but Jimmy Haslam before the meeting today was asked what they do at the appeal, and he said, quote, I'll just say we'll respect and honor the process. Should we take this information as anything new from the Browns and from the NFL owners, or is this kind of what was to be expected uh, from their response to whatever's happening with Peter C. Harvey and the appeal? I think he's speaking for the Browns. Um, I don't, I haven't gotten any indication from anyone else involved that there's a definitive conclusion in terms of this part of the process. And I know we went through the Sue L. Robinson portion and the, the union put out a release saying that they were going to respect that portion of the process. It obviously did not go the way that they expected. I think that everyone involved now is trying to leave every avenue on the table moving forward. The problem is when you ask, what are those avenues? No one seems to have a really good answer. And that's why we got into this debate where when this first came down on Friday, I think the reaction was, well, hey, this could still, uh, there could still be an injunction. So let's say this goes to the next phase. Um, Deshaun Watson, uh, whatever the outcome is, Deshaun Watson could still seek an injunction and be on the field in game one, right? Like that was the initial reaction on Friday. And then as time went on and people started to kind of parse out the reality that there was not a cross appeal by Deshaun Watson in the union, it definitely felt more limited. And so finally, I just got the point, I talked to someone literally yesterday about this. I said, give me, give me a final answer here. Could there be an injunction? Could he play in, in week one? And the literal answer was, we don't know. We hmm. don't know right now and we won't know until we see exactly what Peter C. Harvey does what the next option will be so that's why you've gotten all this conflicting reporting and and content providers in the sports world who are also lawyers um even some of those arguments i think people have to understand the argument is hey it's not a winning route to go it's not even about whether it's a winning route could they go that route yeah would they lose that route likely um but it doesn't take that route off the table just because you could potentially lose you know charles <clears throat> you know from a standpoint I've looked at it uh, of the NFL and the NFL has done pretty much what the NFL does. They they're they're very shrewd. They're calculated. Uh, they don't miss, you know, when they go for it, they go for it. And even when it don't look like, you know, they, they make they had an opportunity with Sue Robinson to kind of say, okay, six games. We look like we wanted to be tough. Let's move on. But guess what they did? They went right back to it and said, no, 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 we're gonna get what we want. In terms of the NFL Players Association, I, I'm I'm, I've been a little, uh, I will, how should I say? I've been a little underwhelmed with their, with the way they've gone about it. First of all, I haven't heard from anybody. I don't even know if they picked this case up or, or anything. Second of all, do you think it was a misstep by saying they came out and basically said, I've heard some lawyers say there was a doctrine where basically since the NFL Players Association said that they were not going to appeal what Sue Robinson said for the six games, Basically, admit, they admitted that they agreed with that ruling. So even if they retroactively go back and, and talk about what Harvey's ruling, it's not going to be like he's going to be on the field week one. It's still going to be at minimum six because they came out and said, hey, we agree with it. Well, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not staying in a Holiday Inn. I'm in a Marriott, <laughs> so I'll probably answer this poorly. <laughs> um, I, I can give you two, two thoughts on that. Number one, um, the fact that the NFL put out an appeal, or I'm sorry, the fact that the, the NFL Players Association put out that statement, and I've heard people sort of say the same thing, was that a misstep? I don't know if it was necessarily a misstep because I don't know what provoked it. I feel like something had to have provoked that behind the scenes. And... This is completely speculation on my part, but I feel like I feel like that kind of thing only happens when if you're in the union, you're sort of expecting an acceptance by both parties. And I know it felt like, hey, they're backing the league into the corner by coming out and saying this. Um, hey, they already know what's coming here and they're trying to apply pressure. It's still, I don't know, I, I felt like that statement, I thought there, you know, these are all parties that have been at the negotiating table prior to this. Everyone sitting there had to have an idea of what each side would accept. And for that statement to go out, it's just, it would be shocking to me to believe that the union did not think that the NFL 
um, was, was, you know, um, was just hard and fast going to end up appealing. This. I, I, I just, I have a hard time believing that now. Um, I'm sorry. What was the, the second, the, the other, Oh, the other part of this that I wanted to bring up, um, even though they put the statement out, remember, and again, I'm not a lawyer here, but this is when you start to talk to lawyers that want to do their lawyering, they'll say it's a two part process. Okay. Once the appeal happened, now there's a rendering of judgment on top of that. And, and, you know, they're going to say, Hey, the, the, the second judgment is about the add on. It's not about the six games. The six games is over. You accepted the six games. Now there's an add on process or a subtraction process, which no one believes is going to happen. So say Peter C. Harvey comes out and says, I want to give him an additional four games here. Again, this is talking to lawyers here. They believe there's some space for argument to go back on the initial decision and say, well, hey, maybe this add-on invalidates the whole thing. Now, I'm not saying that's a winning argument. And I know there are lawyers out there right now watching who are going to go, that's a total losing argument. It does not mean it's not a route, okay? Mm -hmm. It can still be a route that you take and you take the L and you know you're going to take the L. Um, but it doesn't mean that you just give up. If you're not happy with the, the second outcome, it doesn't mean you just give up and take the L and don't fight it in, until eventually having to capitulate. We were talking, Charles, just one more question for you. We were talking earlier about how it's probably uh, a little bit, there's some negotiating probably going on right now between the Players Union and the NFL right now behind the scenes, and maybe they're trying to work this out so that they don't have to take this federal court. Do you agree that that's probably happening? And do you, do you, you don't think so? Do you think, and I don't think so. Fo follow up, <laughs> do you think that the NFL wants this to go that far, or do you think they'd rather get this or get this over with before that? He's really stuck like that. Oh my gosh. Either he's what, thinking. You know Great me? question. We always have people freeze. Right at <laughs> the moment of answer on a great question. That the is, suspense was so built that's up. That's how I like to, that's how, how Yeah, exactly. I think I broke him. Yeah, like. How, wait, no, that's no, how no. good my questions are, people. I was sitting on the edge. Uh -huh. He you. might really still be thinking. He, yeah, he probably is. We, are we sure he's not in just having a moment of zen? Trying to find <laughs> the perfect answer? A, it was a profile I question. Stumped <laughs> I stumped him. I stumped him. I think I got, I got an aunt that took a senior picture with that same look on him. <laughs> Honestly, just can we do a double, expo Man, double, a double exposure on him yeah. when we're staring to the side? <laughs> I'll tell you what. And actually, real quick, uh, just so you guys know, we're going to have to reboot. We just lost connection to RVR. So let's just keep talking. No, that's okay. probably we lost us. Jay. So okay. let's get into some training camp stories as we try and figure out how to get mm. connection to video and graphics back. Okay. Okay. Right. Wait, it's uh, back. Nah. Charles is unfrozen. We may have gotten connection back. There Charles, we go. Right. That was on us, not you. Sorry about that. Oh, okay, I was like, Roger, turn my camera off. Don't. <laughs> don't yeah, don't be, don't be mad at the days in. That was our fault. Uh, okay, what portion of my answer did you get? We didn't None. get any of it. You were any just about okay. to take me to school, and I was, and okay. then so, so I turned, I unplugged everything. Right. I, I will, I'll just tell you this. I think, look, I think if Sue Robinson had come to the table with, um, it, the negotiations ended at the NFL offering a 12-game suspension and a significant monetary fine. I think if Sue Robinson had come in around 12 games, this the NFL would have said, okay, we're not happy with that, you know, but we're, we're prepared to go ahead and, and move our arbitration process, did what it did. I think six games was a, a, a total that the NFL said, no way. This, there's, there's no way we're going we're gonna to stick with that. We have to move this process forward. As much as we don't like it, we're going to have to appeal it and deal with whatever the optics are or however that makes the union feel. In terms of whether there's a negotiation going on now, I would just say no, because um, I think this the relationship is significantly burned between the NFL and the NFLPA at this point. And that's saying something because it's two sides that built up a pretty strong relationship through the COVID years, working through a lot of really difficult issues together. And I think both sides kind of looked at each other and thought, hey, we didn't really think we could work this well together. We've had a, a two-year run here where we've actually come to a lot of compromises in tight spaces, and we've done pretty well. I think all that capital's been burned in this. Wow. And mm. I have a it leads me to question what happened. Because it can't just be, hey, they appealed the process and you're mad that they appealed the outcome. I'm, I am like, have the, have the settlement negotiations been that bad? 
leading up to this? And was there anything else that happened behind the scenes that led you to believe, hey, we're all just going to go ahead and trust in Sue L. Robinson. We have maybe an unspoken, quote unquote, gentleman's agreement that whatever happens here, we're going to go ahead and take this and move on. And then it didn't happen on the NFL's part. And did the union feel undermined by that? Did they feel like they were, you know, um, they had, there was a rug pull? that happened at the last moment. I can't speak to whether or not that's the case. I can just tell you that there is definitely definitive hurt feelings over how that that appeal ultimately came down. I mean, they had to know that that was a possibility that was the that was in the contract that they signed up for and sure. they know how the NFL behaves. So, I mean, you think that maybe something was said behind the scenes that we're unaware of some kind of a gentleman's agreement that they broke. Is that what you're suggesting? I, I can only, I, I mean, in my mind, as you said, everyone involved knew that an appeal was possible. Both sides knew that, that an appeal was possible. So you, it can't be, it's not like it's out of, out of left field. Everybody knew, hey, there's a chance that, you know, and, and the union clearly knew going into the process, that there's a chance that the NFL um, could appeal this, regardless of, of what the ultimate outcome is, the NFL could end up appealing this. So any sense of... Um, I guess lost trust between those two parties can't come just because an, an appeal happened. So if, if, if there's a breakdown now in that relationship, or there's like a fundamental left turn that occurred in that relationship, it leads me to believe like something else must have happened. I don't, and again, these were two parties that had talked to each other and spitballed over settlement agreements for a while. So there was an open line of communication and if for this to feel so burned coming out of Friday, it can't just be because the league appealed. It has to be because the league appealed and it left the union feeling some kind of way that goes beyond just the fact that, hey, the league had the power to do this. Now, I can speak to at least some of that. And then the NFLPA has already made that case itself, which is you keep holding players to a standard of justice that you don't hold your same owners to. You keep holding, you keep saying that owners have to be held to, um, you know, to a high standard as well when it comes to personal conduct and, and you know, how this reflects upon the league. And yet it's always the players who seem to get the most vigorous investigations, the most vigorous punishments, the precedent setting punishments. And yet the owners, there are times where there aren't even investigations that take place. I mean, look at the Texans right now. The Texans were clearly yep. um, involved in this enough to feel like they had to settle um, with 30 women. OK, there was clearly a situation where an NDA was provided to Deshaun Watson by the head of security by the Texans. And yet up until now, there's been no indication of ramifications for the Texans, which just leads into a long held belief, which is the NFL is about two things number one protecting money the money first and then secondly protecting issues that that strike to the integrity of the game which is like miami and tampering um salary cap circumvention mm -hmm. um you know de deflating footballs which could affect the on-field progress uh pro you know calvin ridley placing a bet um things like that 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 that's what the NFL ultimately is. They're they're about protecting the the money for owners and protecting the integrity of the football game. That's Charles, the truth. Thank you so much for uh, you yes. know coming on again. Lots of great insight. Um, we'll be checking back with you. Hopefully this thing is o over sooner than later. Um, but we'll be checking back in with you. Appreciate Charles, you, Charles. Get you some Ohio State gear and the Cleveland <laughs> Guardian. <laughs> Man, go Bucks. He said, See how you just think that went in. <laughs> Tiger's always trying to get some. Thanks, Charles. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Appreciate you, Charles. Uh, uh, we go look. from Charles to uh, another dude. Man. Who? To another cat. Like he's. He's back from the dead. Back from bro, what's an up? expert. We have another. I mean, hold on, hold on. He's an expert. Hold on, we is got an in, expert. Is he in the bunker? <laughs> he in the bunker? <laughs> oh, <laughs> That guy. I'm, in, I'm in the COVID bunker. That's where I am. You got a nice setup, oh, man. man. I, I, need to go, I need to come get some pointers from you about your background. Like How you feel? He's got the Emmy right over the right shoulder. Like he clearly positioned himself <laughs> just so you can see it without completely yeah. like, blocking it. Oh, is that there? Oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't even know that was there. It's so weird. <laughs>
Oh, it's a picture of me and Muhammad Ali. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> First yeah. and foremost, how you doing, man? Yeah, we, how you we, feeling? We've been missing you out here, man. Hey, I go to the grocery store. They always ask me, what is Jay at on the road? I said, man, Jay's, he's going to be back real soon. You know, I'm like, he don't, he's, I, he's good. He's not going <clears> to <throat> die. He don't have nothing. Crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to make it. <laughs> Some people might be disappointed to hear that. I am going to make it. Um, I've missed you guys. I have. Um, I, I, it's funny. I'm just sitting here as a viewer for the first time. And I'm laughing my ass off because you guys are genuinely funny at, at talking about a situation that really there's not much to laugh at. But you, you've made me laugh, which is um, probably what I need more than anything. Guys, um, it struck me listening to Charles, um, A, how smart he is, and B, how plugged in he is. I think he's probably been the single most dialed in reporter on this story. And I know Josina's had a lot. And Florio's had a lot of opinion. But it seems to be that. It seems to be opinion. Um, I think Robinson is kind of the guy that you really want to listen to because I know he's got great sources at the league. Earlier in the investigative stage, he was getting, you know, it was a league source that told Charles that they would not appeal um, if it was less than a year. And so I think he's got people that are plugged in, in in high situations. He kept saying one thing. He kept saying that, something happened behind the scenes. I don't know what it was, yep. but something happened. Mm -hmm. This sort of, think that. and he, he said it so often. And as I'm listening to him, I'm trying to figure out, okay, what happened? Where did the good faith break down? And I have a theory on that. It's just a theory and I'll label it as my opinion. I, I have absolutely no inside information whatsoever, but let's say Mike and I have a dispute and in our pact of friendship, we've decided that we'll try to work it out between the two of us. But Mike, if I don't, I'm going to settle it by going to someone that I choose. Or maybe I'll just trump both of us and I'll settle it. Is, is that treating you as an equal if I do that? Of course before, not. Before I answer that, is this a metaphor for anything? Like, we're yeah. cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you see, hey, this, hey, are we working through something right, on air? Right. <laughs> yeah, hey, this is, see, white people good at that. I understand. <laughs> no, this is underneath this, bro. You can't say he wasn't no. war. <laughs> I understand. I understand what you're saying. And, of course, that would not put us on equal ground in that case. <laughs> so, I think what happened is, and I, I don't know. I, first of all, the fact that I think the NFLPA got duped. I really do. I think they got duped. Because, Mike, you're too smart to ever agree to that. You would say, no, wait, wait a minute. If you and I have an agreement and you get to settle it, or a disagreement and you get to settle it, that's, that's just not fair. You're not treating me as an equal in the friendship. Well, Jay, and Jay, if, Jay it was a smoke screen. Like, they was, it was, see, you, you, ain't, you ain't been here. They was, they, everybody was worried about the money and the 17 games. That they was like, you know what? Slip this in. They ain't even paying attention to that. Slip this in. Yeah, but listen, when you're negotiating a player's, uh, 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 this is a collectively bargained agreement. All of their players, you know how much they pay in union dues to be supported by the union. Oh, you oh, see? There are a I lot of players. It. I sent it to you. Did you see it? I saw it. I saw <laughs> it. And and that's one player, <laughs> yeah. one paycheck. So mm -hmm. here's my point. It, it's an odd hill to die on if you're the players. But at the same time, what they have to be saying collectively behind closed doors is, hold up, our management, our leaders agreed to a collectively bargained agreement that in issues of dispute with, as it comes to player conduct, misconduct, and that's been one of the hot button issues for almost a decade now, that our our union boss, and we voted on this, but somehow it was put in there that, well, when there's a disagreement, I get to settle it. That's that's not fair and equitable. And I think I think what's happened here is, perhaps, perhaps, the union decided, put it in there. They're never going to be so stupid as to actually do that because the optics of that are garbage, but here we are, and they have appealed it, and Roger basically has handed it off to his friend, who I think looks like 
a French artist? Are we sure that this guy does it <laughs> in some sort of French painting somewhere oh, in a chateau? Goodness. And I don't, I don't mean to disparage him at all. I'm disparaging That's the my job, is to Guys, disparage him. I know, I know. <laughs> Guys, this is laughable to me that in any relationship that is, and, and, and it has to be built on trust, right? The most right. important thing in any relationship is trust. And let's be clear, it is a relationship between the league and its players. And it may be the most important relationship that the NFL is in. And they have, they have gone behind, they've circled the wagons in a way where the union leadership has to be embarrassed that they ever agreed to this. And I, I, it almost makes me think that during the discussion stages, was there kind of a gentleman's wink and a nod? Look, we're going to put that in there to make it look as if we are still in control of this vehicle. But we're never going to actually go through with appealing something that has already been decided by the only mutually agreed upon party in the entire system. And Jay, so Jay I this, think, is, this is crazy. Go ahead. Jay, when we, when me, I talked to Brad the other day, and I think we both came in and said it. it it's not. To, the, to us, it's not even about Deshaun Watson anymore. Not at all. Uh, it's no. Nope. I, I think the Players Association yeah. is is to a point where they're saying, "Look, yeah, he probably he did what he did. Yeah, <laughs> okay." But but we're talking about the process, like you know, we're yeah. talking about the fact that if you're gonna have it be Sue Robinson, but if you don't like it, you go and bring your boy in, you bring your guy in, your best friend, and then. He's sifting through documents. Me and Mike was laughing. He's sifting through documents like he's actually reading this stuff. <laughs> you, you know, you can't give any more information. And like, mm -hmm. he, he's just looking. Yeah, go, and they're going to give an oral report to this guy. <laughs> it's crazy. I know it just looks Demora Smith looks crazy for Listen, even having his clients be here. And, and here's the interesting thing, and this is why I say it's not about you're, you're absolutely right. It's not about Deshaun Watson because this would be an odd hill for them to die on. Let's face it, the other 31 teams are livid over the way the Browns structured this contract. Mm -hmm. And if you think for one moment that that doesn't weigh into the league's decision to appeal this, you're missing the point. The fact of the matter is, the Browns thought they had pulled a swervy derv. They thought, wow, we figured this out. He's not going to get more than a year. I think it was probably Deshaun's agent that decided, let's build year one of the salary so small monetarily that if he loses the whole year, he loses nothing. So guys, the fact that he's being fined 0.14% of the overall value of the contract, that is laughable. And the yeah. rest of the teams are upset about this. So I think, and no, they are not negotiating behind the scenes. Tyvis, you made the point, why would the league negotiate? They hold the hammer. They ultimately get to decide what happens here. That's, the, that's because the game is rigged. The game is rigged between the NFLPA and the NFL. And now the NFLPA realizes the mess it's made, and DeMora Smith has to be humiliated because who would agree to do this? Who would agree to do this? And, and so now I think they're not negotiating because they don't need to. Now, there might come a point in time when they do need to negotiate, but that time isn't right now because they still have a hammer. So I think ultimately what we're looking at here is Everybody is furious that he's being penalized so small amount financially. He's losing a, a, a third of a million dollars, and he's going to make $240 million. They want their pound of flesh. So the league can say to the general public, look, we, we didn't just slap this guy 0.14% of his salary and tell him to sit on the sidelines for six games. Somebody brought up the dollar, the dollar amount of $10 million to $20 million. I think that's ultimately going to be where we land. I think that there's going to be a severe financial piece to this that so far is missing. So I would look for the penalty to be somewhere in the 10 to $20 million yeah. range and maybe two more games. And I think that everybody walks away with that. Go ahead, Jay, Ty. Jay, Let me ask a really ignorant question so real he quick first. He, so he took my deal. That's <laughs> what he did. What he I was going to say, what, is it possible? Say they could, the league came out and said, you know what, Deshaun, this is what we're going to do. We're going to give you the six games this year, and then next year we'll give you four games. <coughs> would, that, would that make it? Because he's going to lose money next year for sure. It'd no, be, no. You, you, you think you can't do that? 
you're not going to split the suspension. You, they believe it or <laughs> that not. That would be terrible. And, 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 <laughs> that would, yeah, yeah it, they're it not going to do that. It would hurt. No, that's and cool they, and they, they, it to, on us. <laughs> they're like, dude, yeah, it would hurt. they're not going to do that. Yeah. Here's what I would do. I, I would, and I haven't done the math on this, so I'm not sure exactly where it would fall. <laughs> but I'll try to do a quick, a little bit of quick mental math. I would, I would want the financial piece to the to be not six games off his salary this year. What I would do is take the total sum of money that he is to be paid, which is $240 million, and I would prorate that per game, and then I would punish him financially so he misses six game checks over the entire amateurized contract. And I I can assure you that that would be a much bigger number than $333,000 because – Six games from one year or from, you know, from what he's making this year, that's, that's laughable. So at least this way, there's a more punitive piece to this, to, to this decision. Because right now, I can understand why the public would be looking at this saying, wait a minute, it's, it's going to cost him $333,000 all this, over all of this, and he's going to miss six games. I, I, I can understand why, and I don't know why Sue L. Robinson didn't put – a bigger financial piece in. I don't know why she didn't find him. I think if she had um, find him a fair amount, do you think it would maybe, have been a done deal? Do you think? First of all, here's my ignorant question: Where does the money go when somebody gets fined ten million dollars? Charity. It goes. I'm it all glad goes you charity? brought that up. That's my question. Yeah, well, I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up because I, in this particular instance, I think it's very important that the, whatever the number is, let's just say it's ten million dollars. I think it's very important that that ten million dollars we know exactly where it goes. So I don't know what the cause is. It obviously has to do, maybe it's sex trade workers. I don't know. I, it has somehow, this can't just be $10 million that disappears and nobody knows you know, what became of it. What, where did it go? Mm-hmm. In this particular instance, it has to be earmarked and the public has to know that this is going to help women's causes in some way, shape or form and I, th- I think that would be the other part of this. It would be we, interesting we to see if there's like a history something. of that. Like, is that normally how they do it? I didn't know it all went to charity. And then, I don't like, know. If, if they find Michael Vick, did it go to, like, dog kennels or something I like that? Because that would make sense. I just don't yeah. know if that's how it, it works historically. So I you, don't know. It should, Mike. It should, yeah. to be perfectly honest. I know that the league has a host of charities that they work with. And I don't know if they divvy it up evenly between them. But I do think in this particular case – because the victims were all alleged victims were all women. Um, and I don't know how you figure out exactly which charity is going to win out here. That's for, you know, that's for the park Avenue guys to figure that out, but it can't just be $10 million that disappears into league coffers. Right. And we never know what happened to it. Where, you bring you know, up an interesting came, conspiracy theory that it might be worth exploring. And that is, um, why did she not find him financially very much? And could it possibly be because they had some sort of deal with the NFL in advance where she gave him this because they knew that the public would never be happy with the first thing. So this way it gives the NFL wiggle room so that they can at least do this, uh, do something financial to him in hopes that that will appease the public, possibly. It's a very smart, it's a very smart point. I don't know if you guys remember, about a month ago I had said – that it seems like all of these people, Sue L. Robinson, Roger Goodell, all of the lawyers, it, it almost to me felt like they were actors that were carrying out a pre-written play. And, <laughs> and, and, and this makes perfect sense because now the league can come in and say, hey, we weren't happy with the initial, with the initial decision. We wanted there to be a more punitive stage. Now they can look like the knight in shining armor that came in and dropped the financial hammer they can keep the six games part of it so sue l robinson doesn't look like she's completely dismissed by the way if i'm sue l robinson i resign my position i i don't know why she got used why would you want to be in that she 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 was their useful idiot and i hate to use that phrase but you're exactly right if you're gonna if you're gonna go through this dog and pony charade and then dismiss what she recommends as the punishment anyhow, 
I just, I, I, I can't I mean, she believe knew that, was a that possibility, they did that to her. though. She did know it was a possibility when she signed on. I'm sure she, she, she's, she uh, did. she's a very smart woman. She read, she read the bylaws. I'm sure she knew exactly <laughs> what she was walking into, and she knew that the You're NFL right. has a history. Also, she knew Look. that she knew. I'm sure she was familiar with the NFL's history of. No. Getting what they want and doing what they want when they want it. So I think Sue, she's a she's a big girl, and I think she knew what she was getting into. Now, now Jay, before be, before you use all of your minutes, uh, <clears throat> I know he's you using your uh, dial-up minutes. <laughs> 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 the AOL floppy dish. You Wait, put that dial-up. I got 30. a I got a rotary phone over here. I connected to you guys. <laughs> with. I don't know what you're talking about. Dial-up minutes. <laughs> we gotta get. We. I was at camp, and I'm gonna tell you the hot the hot topic around town is this. Mm. Hot topic. Is Jimmy G Ooh. or no Jimmy G? I went to camp. Jacoby Brissett looked okay. Um, he he yeah. did what he can he, he can do. You know, he, <laughs> these are great, Jacoby. That's raves. Way to his, be in his corner. He, he, he looked thing. okay. He, he did what he can do. Jackson voice. Hey man, you did your thing. Uh -huh. um, big dog. You was a little start off a little slow, but you brought it home at the end. Now, <coughs> there's a couple of people that's moving around. Don't be coughing out there. No. <laughs> Listen, there's a couple people. Around town, on the radio, is hot and ready to go. People are saying, "Look, if you're gonna, if it looks like you're gonna miss Deshaun Watson, Jimmy G is ready to go. He's almost in the same situation Baker was kind of in in San Francisco. Um, mm -hmm. Would you make the deal? If because it's looking like more than six. If it's anything over <clears throat> over over ten or twelve, would you say this guy gives us the best chance to to to, to make the playoffs?" And, and continue with the Browns roster because they had a great roster. He gives us a better chance, but I'm not making that trade, and I don't think the Browns are making that trade either. I, for starters, what they're going to have to give up and the additional salary that they're going to take on to do that. When Honestly, guys, when you look at these numbers side by side, they're almost identical. If you yep. double the touchdowns for Brissett, he's at 72. If you double the interceptions, he's at 34. Now, the reason I say double is because Garoppolo has played many more games. I, I honestly don't think there's a big difference between Brissett and Garoppolo. Now, if you were telling me that maybe you could go out and get, and I don't even know, I, I would throw a name out there, maybe Matt Ryan. Um, mm, okay. I, I, I would probably be more interested in that, but I just think Jimmy G might be worth an extra win or two over Jacoby Brissett. But here's the thing, guys, and this is the sad part of it. If he's out for the year, in my view, they're not going to the playoffs, not in this division. Now, strange things have happened. Maybe Jacoby Brissett can really take to this offense. They can get on a roll. You know how funny things can happen when you start hot. But I, I just don't believe that if they're without Deshaun Watson for the entire year, that they're a Super Bowl contender. So I would hate to see them mortgage more money and, and more assets to upgrade from Brissett to Garoppolo. I just don't think that that's a big enough leap that you would want to lose those resources. If so, they can do that, if, though, Jay, here's the thing. If you didn't have to lose <laughs> many resources, the reason that I would be in defense of uh, Jimmy G for this is if you didn't have to lose many resources, you talked about maybe get some one or two extra wins. I want those one or two extra wins this year. <laughs> if it's not going to cost me anything. And you that. say we might not be a playoff team. Well, we might not, but those one or two extra wins gives us a little bit of a better chance. I don't have that much faith in Pittsburgh. I don't know what's. I don't know what uh, who's going to get hurt. What's going to happen? And I want those one or two extra wins. Here's the other thing: <coughs> I've never heard anybody in all of my years get excited when mentioning Jacoby Brissett. Probably including anybody in his immediate family, if I had to guess. And that's no offense to him. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I've no, you've nobody. You just heard his. You just heard uh, G's analysis of J of Jacoby Brissett. He's like, he looked okay. He did what he had to do. That's the best you'll ever hear about him. I see people get excited about Jimmy Garoppolo. I see Jimmy Garoppolo excite teammates. No, I as much as people are talking about what a pro Jacoby is and stuff, and I'm sure he is. He's. I've heard nothing but good stuff about him. But just good stuff about him. I've never heard a teammate be like, I will go, I would go to the mat for that guy. That's my boy right there. He's my hero, my best bro. <laughs> Nobody's like that. They're just like, he's a professional and I like him as a person and he's okay. <laughs> so I want that excitement and at least bring me that 
you know, if nothing else, the guy's a proven winner. So bring me a proven well, winner. To that, I would say, why then are the 49ers so anxious to move on from him? That's true, but the, he's, it's the, because he's, they've got a better option the, prob the, probably do behind they, him. Three do they? Three first-round draft I mean, picks is what it's called. That's the three hurts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, when I look at their better option, I know that this guy's taking the team to the Super Bowl. I know that. True. I watched it. I don't know what Trey Lance is going to be. I have no idea. Now, granted, they, they're high on him, but I think the Jets were high on their quarterback when they just drafted him. I think they were high on their last quarterback when they drafted him in the first round. So guys miss, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know Kansas City was awfully excited about Mahomes, and it panned out. But mm -hmm. how many times have teams been very excited about the young quarterback in the wings, and that young quarterback in the wings got his chance, and they were like, wait a minute. He doesn't quite look like we thought he would look. So R I'm just saying that. Really quick, you got a stat for us? You, you got us? <coughs> yeah, no, I just, we talk about doubling numbers and touchdowns, and Jimmy G's a proven winner. It's just worth mentioning. We mentioned it yesterday. I'll mention it again. As a starter in his career, Jacoby Brissett's 14 and 23. Jimmy G's 33 yeah. and 14 in the playoffs. Hey, 33 and 14 well, in his career, 5 and 2 in the playoffs. <coughs> yeah, that's, you're absolutely right. I think he's had much better talent around him. And I think that's probably led to some of that. Look, if is anybody on a show of hands, let's let's take the wide shot of the panel. Oh, a show of hands, are the Browns a Super Bowl team for the season with Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback? I, I, I absolutely. Wow. You, I, I, hold on, wait a minute. How, let, let, let me explain yourself. Let me explain. break this down because you know, I, I got it. You know, in this business right now. I got first. Man class personal experience with this situation. We know. And you I have broke cool it down friends. yesterday. <laughs> you have so, cool friends. We Jay, know. listen. He's eating barbecue listen, over there. Listen, Jay. <laughs> would you, true or false, <laughs> with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback, you'd say the Browns at best nine win team? I think that's a stretch. So that's a stretch. Okay. For me, it I'm, is. I'm glad you said For me. that. I was talking to McNuggets about this. Now, you say, why is it that the 49ers want to move off of Jimmy Garoppolo? Well, yeah, they made this big trade for Trey Lance and all that. I do believe that Jimmy Garoppolo has limitations. <laughs> I do believe that. His deep ball is sometimes is not where it needs to be. But outside of that, he is capable of making every pass. I think Kyle Shanahan has done a, a fantastic job of not putting him in situations and utilizing him to his strength. Now, would you, Agree. Would you say... <laughs> Looking at San Francisco's defense and their team that they had when they went to the Super Bowl, true or false, if Emmanuel Mosley did not give up that deep seven cut Man. and Richard Sherman yeah. didn't get beat on that inside nine, the, the 49ers winning that Super Bowl, which is true or false? Well, I, I will tell you that in all likelihood, yes, they do. But I would okay. also tell you that we don't play the if game on this show. I understand because that. When I, but what when, I, and the reason we don't is because I tried to with Baker Mayfield in Kansas City. And, and I said, like, so guys, nah, if... And you were nah, like, oh, no, 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 you're nah. not bringing that up in here. You're right. What so, I, you know, if, 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 <laughs> if, if the Browns stop Kansas City on fourth and a mile, nah, they go bad. to Buffalo the next... They go to Buffalo the next week to play in the AFC Championship well, game. What, well, what I'm it's saying... Right, think well, I'm not going to use the if then. Let's put it to you this way right now. Jimmy Garoppolo, if you look at the Browns team and you look at San Francisco team, the Browns team is pretty much structured the same way. Great run, great... It's very great, similar great situation. Run, great, yeah. great defense. If a quarterback could come in and get us to the AFC Championship game, at least we have a shot to be there. With Jacoby Brissett, we will not be sniffing no AFC <laughs> Championship game. Therefore, it's justified <laughs> making the trade. I well, here's the problem. I, no, I, I, look, it's an opinion. I don't think it's a fact, so I can't say true or false. I would say, in my view, if I'm running the organization, the only way I'm making this trade is if I can say he's the missing piece. We get Jimmy Garoppolo, we go to the Super Bowl. But, guys, and, and, and I talk about this all the time when we're talking about baseball and the trade deadline, why the Guardians didn't make any moves. In my view, they looked around at the landscape, and they said, does this make us better than the Yankees? Does this make us better than any other team, definitively better than any other team in the American League that's suited to win right now? Can, can we beat the Astros? Can we beat the Yankees? And I think the answer to that was no. We're, we're, there, there were more than one or two missing parts. So I think for the Browns to pull this trigger, 
it they have to be able to say that this is going to be the move that regardless of what Deshaun what happens to Deshaun Watson if we have Jimmy G for the year we're going to the Super Bowl and when you look around the landscape Kansas City Buffalo Cincinnati which What's we wrong don't with know about Baltimore What's wrong with the playoffs? I, 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 nothing's I, if, wrong if, with the playoffs. If my option Mike. is not going to the playoffs, or I, I would enjoy looking at the playoffs personally. And I, Mike, even if we come up short, uh, I'd still <laughs> like that ride. I don't know. You I would know. normally agree. I would normally agree with that, Mike Tyvis. Maybe this is where you want to go to with that. I think for the Browns, the, so five years ago, yeah, like because we hadn't had a playoff experience in forever. So God, just let us get to the party. Let us step on the right. dance floor and see what that feels like again. But now where this team is, with their talent and where they are in terms of positioning, their their roster is a Super Bowl caliber roster sure. if Deshaun Watson is the quarterback. But that's like saying the the Buccaneers are a Super Bowl caliber roster with Tom Brady. I understand that. But what you're saying is you'd rather just pout and watch them not make the playoffs this year if you can't watch Deshaun Watson than make this I, if you didn't have to give anything up than I, make this yeah, trade and make the one, one, and make the playoffs and have the fans enjoy that. Well, just you, be like, well, we're not gonna go we're not gonna win then. No, I don't think you're saying we're not gonna win then. I think what you're saying is do you really, Mike, if if you were to put a percentage chance on the Browns going to the Super Bowl, I'll ask three questions. Deshaun Watson's the quarterback. What are the chances that the Browns go to the Super Bowl this year? In your mind? 90%. I love your optimism, Ty. Let's, let's, let's say 20%. Let's say 20%. Go ahead. Okay. What if Jimmy Garoppolo's the quarterback? Um, it, here's my only question to that. Is, is the percentage higher with him being the quarterback or with Jacoby Brissett being the quarterback? That's the <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was that my third question. So, okay, great. So that's my third question. Okay, yes, great. So, then, then my next, then we'll say if it's uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, ten, uh, we'll say 5%. Okay, and with Jacoby Brissett? Four percent. I'll take Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> yeah. So, so what you're, so what you're ultimately going to do is, I like the logic. I you're like going to give up assets that will help you Again, next year when you actually the, have Deshaun only Watson. Only if the assets. You're right, and that's the key. I have to put that. Per, I have to take all? that into consideration too. Whatever I'm, if I'm giving up uh, something, I'm not going to give up something that will mortgage my future for this chance. But Speaking if it's not, of, that's a great segue. Mortgaging. Go future. right ahead. Yes. Mortgaging futures. <laughs> Jay, we got to get to. We got at least get to this. Yeah, trade no, Jay's not leaving yet. Mike He's doing like a nice job in this chair, everybody. He's doing a nice job in this chair. <laughs> Before Jay it. leaves, though. <laughs> We got to tell you where this next is coming from, and it's coming from the internet, which means PCC Airfoils is our sponsor. Oh, for a job with career advancement and great benefits, PCC Airfoils is a leading <clears throat> manufacturer in Northeast Ohio. All locations of PCC Airfoils in Eastlake, Mentor, Wycliffe, and Minerva are hiring for all positions starting at $18 and up, plus full benefit packages, paid time off, and a signing bonus. Apply online at precast.com slash careers to learn more. I'll I tell you what. Um, I, I will give you this. Uh, 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 Mike Polk Jr. has has some strong takes. I uh, I didn't think he had that in that <laughs> middle right. chair game right now. He's like, yo, I like this Jimmy G stuff. I, I had like, like a that. pot of coffee. <laughs> well, here's here's where we see Polk and his true uh, sports acumen right here. Here Polk, we go. We're gonna set you up on a tee. This came out this morning. Let's take the tag board, Steve. Bears star linebacker Roquan Smith has asked the team to trade him. He wants to go to a contender. So that made us think in the pre-show meeting. Hmm. Uh, what yeah. about a little, uh, I'm going to present a trade to you guys. Yeah. Let's see what you guys think. Maybe Kareem Hunt and Anthony Walker for Roquan Smith. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell, tell you this right now. At first, I thought about it and was like, you know what? I'm not doing that trade. <laughs> I am. And then no. I thought about it and was like, I am. well, <laughs> Kareem Hunt is a Kareem Hunt is a is a rental, right? He's not coming back next year. We all right. pretty much agree with that. Right. You got three other running backs. Kareem Hunt would actually go there and they might actually give him a new contract in Chicago. Right? <laughs> He'll actually be he might be the bell cow there. Hmm. If you look at it, Roquan Smith wants a new deal. Um, I think he's on his rookie deal type as you said, I think it's a fifth year deal. He's looking for a long term contract. Bears did give it to him. Now here's the problem. The Browns. I don't think would earmark that am that amount of money for a linebacker. I just don't think they think that position it deserves that amount of money. However, I will say this. If he's going to be a rental, he can help me get to where I want to go. Now, if I get Roquan Smith, 
and I put him with that defense. Now I feel like I could do some Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, Baltimore Ravens type <laughs> stuff. Now what I'm looking at, and if, even if it's only a rental, I'm cool with that because guess what? That still gives me an opportunity to compete. And you look at the roster. If it's Jacoby Brissett, eh, uh, that makes my team better. I think you can lean on the defense and run the football, and you still got three other running backs. I mean, I, am I crazy for saying that I would do this? I deal? Would, I'm with you. I take the deal. I would definitely. What's his contract for? He only has one, one more year. He's on the last yeah, year the last of year. his rookie deal. He's an unrestricted free agent last year, just like mm. yeah. Hunt would be. But if you add so Hunt like and Walker yeah. salaries together, it's about the same as Smith. I'm taking the deal. I'm definitely the plan to win. Number one is play great defense. You got a middle line. Him and JOK, <laughs> they be crazy. Man, listen. They be crazy. They would, <laughs> listen. That'd right, be fun that, to watch. That, yes. That'd be nice. <laughs> With, it, with that defense, the way it's set up, you got them two dudes <laughs> on the edge. Your, your secondary is coming together. Man, that that's LOB vibes right there. That's, that's so, Seattle. Jay, that's, are you taking I'm this taking totally deal. mythical here, deal here that we go, just Jay. made up completely? <laughs> Trade machine. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm taking it. <laughs> ah, yeah, but, Jay. I, it's I'll a big deal. But I'll tell you guys this, though. Um, I, I, think, I don't know who said it. Someone said I'm not sure the Browns value that position that way. I can tell you they don't. Um, right. If you take a look at what, what they've done at that position, mm -hmm. particularly uh, in the last five years, and you guys can figure out who's been there for the last five years, mm -hmm. um, and the way their money ball crunching of numbers and value of player and position, um, I don't think they value that position. I don't think they look at that as the key position on the defense. Clearly, so they the way they know drafted, they do the not. Yeah, that was a, that I mean, was a Sandejo <laughs> gag, everybody. I think, it was yeah. a throwback. I can only call him. I don't even mm -hmm. mention his name. I tell you what, though. <laughs> I what, don't what, but his though, name. even though they might not value the position, <laughs> he seemed like a nice guy. Even I... if they don't value the position per se, if if he came here and had like an All Pro season, <laughs> I think they would. If this defense went from five to one, they would reconsider that thought, I believe. Yeah. 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 He, Look, you you never not... really had that guy there to know if you value if you need it or not. Technically. No, you haven't. But I, I just watched when when they let Schobert walk. Um, for me, what what I, I just was a little dumbfounded. And I know I talked to folks that from around the league that said the same thing. They were like, you know, it was a good fit with what they were doing. They clearly value up front and the back end of the defense. And I don't even know if they value the safeties, but they value the corners. Where is Joe and Sherbert now? I don't know. Out of the league. I, I'm, Schober went to well. He went to Pittsburgh. No, I don't. No, I is think he, he went to Pittsburgh. Or, he was Jacksonville Jack and Pittsburgh is the teams that he's played Alexa, with. So where's Joe Schober now? <laughs> we need to get one of those right see, here. I, I mean, if that's the case, then the Browns was hey, let me, right let me, there, right? It, let me ask you. Let me ask you something. Um, Jay, no, he Jay's still a, had Jay's productive a years left. Guy that likes. Remember, you said you. He actually believes that you can win the Super Bowl different ways. A lot of people, I would say I 75 do. to 80 percent, believe that you can only win the Super Bowl by having a dynamic quarterback that's a franchise quarterback and, and and putting it on his shoulders and throwing the football. But you you saw Tampa Bay, you saw them in their heyday, right? And and I think but you believe you, that you can win it a, a couple different ways, right? <laughs> I do. I, I firmly believe that. And anybody who thinks that it's just the quarterback is kidding themselves. Even when Tampa won a couple of years ago. Guys, look at their defense when they won the Super Bowl. And and Tom Brady wasn't exactly blowing teams off the field. Yeah, yeah. he was he had he had big throws in big spots, which all teams need, but they had a defense that flat got after it. And it wasn't as good as the Buccaneers defense when they won Super Bowl 38 or whatever that was. But I do think, and I know Bull firmly disagrees with me on this. Bull believes that the league has changed now and you cannot win without an elite quarterback. And I mean, Garoppolo almost won it. And Garopp nobody's going to call him yeah. an elite quarterback. And that was that is very recent history. It's not like the league has changed that much since Garoppolo lost the Super Bowl. So I, I think that the easiest path to a Super Bowl is to have an elite quarterback. But I I will die saying this: if you have an elite and and, and maybe even like an all time great defense, you can win with a mediocre quarterback. The Buccaneers did it in Super Bowl 38. I know the Ravens did it. We know you miss Baker, um, Jay. We know you miss Baker. I don't <laughs> say it. I'm not. No, I listen, know. I know. I know. What <laughs> I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, the Browns' defense isn't that defense. 
Okay. Right. They, the, the Browns defense is, I would say, top 10 in the league. To, to, do, to, to do it that way with the Baker Mayfield type. Right. Your defense has to be top ranked in the league, and it has to be in the conversation as one of the great defenses of all time. Yeah, they got to be scary. When we saw Chicago, and now I know this is ancient history, but when Chicago won in 85, and they averaged, I think they, I think the defense allowed nine points a game for the entire season. That's okay, Jim <laughs> McMahon was horrible. Jim yeah. McMahon was horrible. He really was. But they all, they, they, they handed it off to Walter Payton. When they got close, they handed it off to to the fridge and the defense put the clamps down on everybody Super Bowl path yeah so I know that the league is different now I will give you that but it Super Bowl (laughs) try to forget all about that so I I do think that you know they could win with Garoppolo but to do it I think they'd have to have a top one or two ranked defense in the NFL and I don't think they're there yet before we let you go I gotta I I, I need to get you on record on this we gotta start this (laughs) we gotta start this watch immediately (coughs) Um, okay do you, what, what, what you got? What you got going into this Panthers game? You, you, you got the Panthers and Browns week one. Is you gonna yeah. wait till you see Jacoby Brissett a couple preseason games before you put put what you think well, in that game? I'll who, tell who you this you much. Winning? Um, who? You can't. If that be like, if, if, if I asked you, who you taking, the Guardians or the Red Sox? But I'm not gonna tell you who the starting pitchers are. I get that. I get that too. Guys. But I mean, I don't know who's starting for the Browns, and I don't know who's starting for the Panthers. Word on the street is Baker's well, so looking good down there. Word, word on the street, Baker, that deal. Word on the street, he's somehow it, outplaying Darnold. Some it's, it's amazing that it can happen. Assuming <laughs> it's Baker Mayfield and Jacoby Brissett, I feel yeah. like there's a lot of people <laughs> are going to edge Baker in that matchup, right? And you know he's going to be mad. I, I do. You know he's going to well, be mad. Well, Vegas is. Vegas is is favoring. Um, I think I thought I saw that they were a one point favorite. Now, granted, you get a couple of points when you're the home team, but if it ends up being Baker and Jacoby, mm. I wouldn't touch that with Mike's money. Number one, <laughs> just because you never bet on quarterback. You never bet on an NFL game where the quarterback of that team is playing his first game in that system. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what this would be on yeah. both sides. That game's horrifying. So please don't don't throw your money out the window of that moving vehicle. Don't bet on it. Now, for entertainment purposes only, if it was Jacoby and Baker, and I had to make a gentleman's bet, and I'm <laughs> not going to lose hard-earned money on it, I'm still going to take the Browns because yes, Baker's going to be amped and ready to go, but he's one guy. There's going to be. 11 guys on the defense that he's going to be on the field with that are going to be amped as well. Mm-hmm. And they're going to want to prove that they're the team. They're, it's not, it's not Pan- the Panthers. And by the way, I just think, too, the Browns have such a big roster advantage that if they do lose this game, I'm going to feel the exact same way I did when they lost to the Titans at home a couple of years ago. I'm, I'm going to want to climb into a cave. I'm, I'll probably feel worse too Man. because this team is better. I know that Jarvis and Odell and all that nonsense, but if they lose this game, it's going to be a really, really rough start to the season. I just had like a great, I got I had a great idea, you guys. <laughs> okay. Oh, so does anybody have a friend down uh, who actually is around the Carolina area. I, I got a cousin. Okay, yes. great. So we, that way we can get a postmark something. <clears throat> we start sending the Browns defense hate mail from Baker Mayfield right now <laughs> saying, <laughs> I, you guys stink. There's good luck. You, I always hated all I of you. I don't think they need it. I'm better than all of you. I'm glad I'm away from Cleveland. Like, let's, how, how can we amp up this defense I don't think through our that. chicanery? I think they are. I think the defense is already going to be amped up. Right? Well, and a little hate mail can't hurt that, that. We can all agree on that, right? It's 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 mention his specific trying to family fit. members. It's going to be trying to, the offense trying to get it going. Like, really get down and dirty, though. I feel like. The yeah. defense coming to play. For Set up. Sure. Right. I'm Easy. just gonna go ahead and move ahead with this plan and pretend like we all agreed to do it. <laughs> we all signed it. We, Sounds we, we good. All, we all complicit. We need that cousin's address. Jay, uh, I, I appreciate it. you. We, it was good seeing your face, man. We miss you. Get back soon, bro. We will be in the studio before you know it. Keep and, hydrating. Uh, so. we rock Keep roll. eating celery. <laughs>
and peanut butter. <laughs> you probably drive I'm doing both. Right up a wall. That poor <laughs> woman. <laughs> she honestly. Like, he down there talking about you want to you want to hang out? You want to hang out? <laughs> you want to watch a movie? Oh, thoughts and prayers. <laughs> thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Keep hydrating, brother. Love you. See you soon. <laughs> Take care, guys. Uh, I'll, be back. I'll be glad. I'll be, when, I'll be glad when he go home. Mm-hmm. This is he down exactly. here just all in my. I, I got. She's looking at him every day. She's like, you don't feel better yet? You look good in the face. I feel like it's okay. You're barely coughing all the time at all. Maybe you just want to take that into work. A little bit, get that energy. I tell you what, where where we at? It's time to do a little type of special here. Oh, the first preseason coaches poll came out yesterday. Steve, we could take 52 on the VO board. Let's see the top five. Where them bucks at? Alabama, 54 of the first place votes. Ohio State comes in at number two with five first place votes. Georgia, number three with six first place votes. Mm, this but be the good. consensus, it's Buckeyes and Tide this year. But my question for you, we'll start with Tyvis. Mm, Should there be that much of a gap between Bama, the defending, uh, they're not the defending champs, between Bama and Ohio State, who has the Heisman favorite in C.J. Stroud, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Travion Henderson, and all those guys who are going to be first round picks? Put the camera on me. Uh oh. Uh oh. The man means business. Absolutely, there should be that big of a gap. Yes. <laughs> me as a former Curve Buckeye. Ball. Thank you. Curve ball. Thank straight you. Straight up. Yes. Why? Because when you watch Alabama, you don't question, you know, their toughness. You don't question, you know, whether it matters to them. Uh, after what Ohio State did in the team up north game, and even the first half of that Utah game, it was like that. So <laughs> they, they have to come out there and prove to me that they ready to bang with these teams because if you want to win it all, me being a guy who bang with these Alabamas in them trenches is real. So you got to be able to show that that all this all season that coach Mick and put y'all through. You got to show that y'all are a tough team and y'all ready to run that ball and stop that run and be a physical team more than just a quote unquote finesse team. But yeah, with, with what you have returning is is no reason that y'all shouldn't be in the title game. There is absolutely no reason that y'all can't win it all this year. So y'all just have to go out there and prove that y'all have become tougher and that defense is back to being silver bullet-esque. And you don't have to quite be the silver bullets. I'm not asking you to be the number one defense, but you got to be top 25 if you want to get this thing done in this league. So, yeah, second place, I'm cool with that. It gives them motivation to go out there and not and think that they haven't arrived. It gives them something to, to aim for. They still got to go up their mouth. If anything, I wanted them to be three or four, to be quite honest with you. Wow. Just to, as a way of humbling them and keeping them. Keeping yeah, them you know, it's not a humbling thing. It's that you got work to do. Right. Like if you come out there, you look at them preseason. I've been a player. You look at them mm. preseason polls and you number one. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, man, we did. We the greatest show on turf. Yeah. But now you go out there and you two, three, four. It's like, hold on. We got something to prove. Right. I want to play with that edge and this team needs that edge. But will that really affect Alabama that much when they see that? Will they just be, will they do you think that they'll be well, Alabama's used to it? They're used yeah. to it. Yeah, it's, they, they, this isn't their first rodeo. Ohio, Ohio State doesn't be the preseason number one all the time. Right. It's, I think it's only happened after we won it that one year. That was the only time we were number one coming into the preseason. What so the, it was always motivation to get to the top of the ranks. Do you remember what the ranks looked like when you were playing? Like where they, where you guys were guessed, assumed you'd be at? Uh, like I say, in 15, did you well, after we won when you, when you, was which year is this, 2014? 2014, we did. We were not preseason number one. 2015, okay. we were. Okay. We had won the national championship. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, this see to me, Tyvis, I commend you for doing that. Oh, Thank I'm a, hold on, GG. One thing Thank about you. me. I'm gonna keep it 100 with you at all times. <laughs> Even if it doesn't benefit me, I'm gonna uh, always tell you the truth. Now, opinion, he, he could have went to the league in baseball though too. Yeah, oh, that's a fact. That. I remember that. <laughs> you seen the clip? Mm-hmm. Carlos already told you the swing yes. is there. Nope. What you yep. mean? Nobody now, hits a slow pitch softball like you, my man. Now, now he, now he talked about it. I will give you credit for this. Ohio State's defense, and until y'all get y'all's defense together, you're not going nowhere. Because if you look at the last since 2014. You look at the winners uh, of the BCS or college football playoff, and nobody on that list had under or over a top 25 defense. 2014, uh, total in total defense, uh, Ohio State was was 19, still in the top 25. Alabama was Alabama actually was uh, third in in 2015. 2016, Clemson was eighth. Alabama in 2017 was first. Clemson was fifth and 18. LSU was 31st. Uh, in total defense. However, they they had the, the number one total offense in the game. They had Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and every other great receiver known to man in LSU. So 
I'll give him a little reprieve for that. <laughs> then you get back to then you get back to Georgia. Total defense is, is second. When you look at Ohio State, the problem that that they have is the defense. 59th last year in total defense, 38 in scoring defense, uh, and 96 in pass defense, giving up over 245 yards a, a game, and 100th in third down conversions. You can't beat Alabama. You can get away with that against Illinois. You can get away with that against, uh, you know, teams like Wisconsin and Iowa. That's cool. But when you're trying to get to that college football playoff and you got to beat two, probably two SEC teams and a really great ACC team, you can't you can't give up that amount of yards on the ground to to, to, to talk about you want to be in the championship. I don't watch a ton of college football. Here's my question though. Is it fun knowing already preseason who's definitely going to be there at the very end and who like the fact that everyone knows that Alabama's gonna <laughs> is be there? Is it fun? Yeah, yeah, is this is it it is. You know why? Why? Because <laughs> now you see when no. you go to Ohio State or the Alabamas right. and stuff, no. you're everybody's Super Bowl. So okay. there is no week that you could come in there. Oh, we got Illinois. No, yeah, Illinois I, coming there to ruin the season. That, so that's that's I, the fun in it right there. Anytime okay. you think I that like you're just going like to walk past it, right. it's not going to happen. Somebody going to come in and this get you them why, upset game. This is why I like NIL. You know why NIL works? And so it's because Texas A&M at this point in time, uh, they should no reason they should have the number one recruiting class. Uh -huh. Not only do they have the number one recruiting class, they have the number one recruiting class of all time. Okay, like they're, that's, they're unbelievable, right? of, that's unbelievable, that's unbelievable. Like, unbelievable. Of all time. Now NIL is trying to trying to change the landscape of of college football. Previously, you just knew when teams was cheating, right? Because right. all of a sudden you, they look around, you be like. How the hell is Ole Miss good? <laughs> right, like, right. Yeah, how yeah. you got all these five stars, bro? <laughs> yeah, right. And one year Bush Davis was North Carolina, like yeah, you had to follow the money. Was yeah, like harder. hold on, North Carolina's good this year. Yeah, <laughs> damn, they beat the brakes off Miami. How they good? <laughs> See now, when you out and out start paying people, yeah, what people will realize is, so I can go to Ohio State. But if you go to Ohio State, there's a good chance you ain't gonna play till your junior year. You may never play. That's not true. I got a guy, Briante Dunn. <laughs> you probably know him, That's, right? He was my roommate. Okay, he was the coldest <laughs> thing coming out of Stark as County. a freshman. Yeah, and, and, he was starting it. He was playing as a freshman. You know what happened? No, tick. he started fumbling the ball. Uh, mm. look, look, oh, he he could have fumbled the ball every play at OU and right. got thirty five hundred <laughs> a year. <laughs> right. is my roommate. She, hey, Briante was great out coming yeah, out. He, fumbled, right? he started fumbling the ball. Like, they, what they gonna do? If you at Old State, you catch a cold one. Day. Right, they got right. seven, eight, five stars at receiver, 10 running backs, 96 offensive of linemen, all of them on scholarship. <laughs> and when you start paying people, guess what happened? Now, now you say, well, do I really need to go to Ohio this State? Is, so now it'll disperse the talent. This is a terrible analogy. This, is a terrible analogy. But, yeah, listen, this sounds a little bit like trickle down <laughs> economics, yeah, but I'm listening. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah don't sometimes believe, it really don't never believe gets what he down said, to right. the level where we Mike, need to. Don't believe yeah. what he said. Nibbles down here to the but, Eastern Michigan yeah, branch. Yeah, it's not going to get to Eastern Michigan, <laughs> no. Because <laughs> if you're good enough, you're just going to go to a big, big Ten school. It may just not be Ohio State. Right, right. I will say this, though. Uh, all jokes aside, when you look at Alabama, I think what, what the league needs to do, and, and we talked to Gene Smith about it, uh, what will help that perception out is adding more people to the college football playoff. I thought Cincinnati did a good job. You need more teams like Cincinnati mm -hmm. in there. And they, and they when they played, they didn't get boat raced. Well, right? they went against the SEC yeah. two years in a row. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they was in it with Georgia two years ago. Yep. They was in it with Alabama. Now, I don't see too much, I don't see too much difference between Ohio State at the skill positions. Well, I, I think that what, what the defense is, is just Nick Saban, just he don't give up much. He, except the year that y'all gashed him with Zeke Elliott. Um, I haven't I haven't seen him get embarrassed on the defensive end of the football field. So to me, I think Ohio State, I think Ohio State will be make the college football playoff. Um, they, they I just I just don't know. <laughs> There's going to be some furniture moving. I don't Columbus. know if they're going to be able to win it. We'll see. We'll see. That's sad. Uh... Why? That's sad that you feel that way. I, 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 can, what you mean? I mean, I, I don't, I can't say that you're wrong because of what, what no, we what we're off, going off of previous year. Mm -hmm. But I just think it's listen. This is the thing. This story, this story that Ohio State is going through. The book has already been written. It's literally the same story from 2014 when we actually won it all. The only difference is they got their starting quarterback. We did. Now I will say this as as we pivot to your second part. How do you get all these topics? What you How mean? Time to get all these topics. We doing 
We do G. Bush, hey, you got to cater to your panel sometimes. Yeah, you yeah, just, you know. Tom, Tom is just keep getting time. All right. Wow. Right. <laughs> wow. This is literally only like my third, third time. He, we going to go. We going to. I will give you this, though. Uh, the, Ohio, Greek, the Greek freak is still the greatest. Look, I yeah, should have yeah. rephrased. Giannis is the best to ever do it. At age 26. Now, argue with that. Was that a callback? <laughs> was that a callback to a show from like eight months ago? Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, it was. I, I, I sat back and I thought about it and I said, how could I make this statement true? Right. The age of 26 going into their 27th year. Ooh, okay. Nobody's got... better than Giannis. You Very can watch specific. Argue with, Very your, specific. argue with your uncle. You, no. can, you can watch that on demand on YouTube. Uh-huh. Shameless plug. Go back and watch that with Tyvis. I'm sure they yep. will have the tag there. Just go ahead to be Tyvis, Giannis. Enjoy the farmer's up. insurance go ahead and take that commercial up. that rolls before you have to watch it. Now, there was. Now, when we talk this about next this. next topic, though, G. Bush, not Star Series Thunder, but this is exactly Tyvis. Related. Ohio yes, State, we exactly. had to mention it, but ESPN it's a very Tyvus centric show. It is a Tyvus eccentric wow. show. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Hey, listen, Tyvus is getting jobs left and right. We got yeah, we got, we got to feed his people. We got to leave us all what together. Is with y'all We're like this, man. Tyvus catering. Came, right, Tyvus came in here like, oh, no, I, 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 this is a list of For anybody who's just tuning in, Tyvus keeps getting new jobs and <laughs> offers <laughs> while we just <laughs> sit here in these chairs. <laughs> No, <laughs> this is not true. No, we'll go into it later. We'll, we're going to go into it later and celebrate you. Do you, should, do you want to talk about it a little bit? Well, right, final should, take. Final take. Final take. Final take. Final take. So ESPN talent <laughs> production rankings. Ohio State was named actually DBU. Huh. Uh, and they actually came in top five in four other position categories. Mm. Uh, now, when you talk about the DBU situation, right, mm. for me, I, I'm not gonna lie. A lot don't of say DB, it. don't a, say it. A lot of DBs do go there. A lot of DBs do go to Ohio State. Y'all got a, a number one okay. first round pick every year. Okay. I don't really see nobody that can really say that. Um, in, if it was early 2000s, I would think Miami had it right. Okay, Miami, I respect that. Miami was doing a thing. But I really can't hate. I'm trying to think of another school that, oh, that, that I would it's, put it's there. either us, LSU, Florida, or Alabama. Oh, hold on, that's hold your, on, that's your, bring it back, that's your bring arguments. it back. Hold on, hold on, bring that back, bring that all the way back. Ohio State, L- LSU, he, Florida, LSU, or Alabama. He just had like a Columbo moment where LSU, he realized something. LSU is close as hell. Okay, they, I get, okay. they close as hell. Okay. What was? Do we know what they were ranked on this list? Second. Man, Patrick Peterson, mm. Morris Claiborne, was mm. Kelsey. Yeah, um, really just, good. Just, I mean, they you want to go? You want to go name for name? Because uh, 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 we can do, uh, we can play the, that the game. The safeties, my goodness. We can play that game. Uh, hey, G. Bush, I'm glad you're going here because we I'm got about, some, you, some graphics that we're going to back up time. You want to go that? So, yeah. Come on now. This is Ohio State since 2014. We named them DB. They have eight first round draft picks in okay. 2014, four taken in the top 10. Okay. Should have been nine. No other program has more than four in that span. And just to give you some names, you mentioned Patrick Peterson, Grant Delpit for LSU. They just had. Derek Stingley Jr. Let's take the next one, Steve. Grant Delpit is going to shine. Some notable OSU DBs throughout the years. <laughs> okay. How about Denzel Ward? Oh, yeah. Jeff Okuda? <laughs> oh, Marshall sure. Marshawn Lattimore? Oh, yeah. And some guy we never heard of. <laughs> How is this man? Some stiff. <laughs> yes. The, yes. The, yes. The, out you know what? List. We ain't even – the last name on there, I mean. He this, wants to – can you this, save him that graphic as an court. NFT? I already got yeah, it. You, All right, good. Yeah, I already got it. That's my – you know what? That actually was my last interception of, col- of college football. Is that right? It is. Wow, he got yep, it. Yep, sure is. Steve. But two of those names on that list, like even take it post-college. Go NFL. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Top ten in the top ten corner in the league. Two of them. Two out of the team. That is impressive. Any other school can say that? What, 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 what you? What you yeah, got to say about that? The big four. Uh, if it's DBs and you're talking secondary, you did have. We like, talk about secondary. We talk about secondary. You had, you had Honey Badger from LSU. Honey ba- I forgot the about time. the Honey Badger. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, let, let's see. Oh, did, Wait, I mean, we, and we going first round. We gonna start. It started with Bradley Roby. Hold on. Hold on. Boom. After Bradley Roby, it went Eli Apple. Then it went Garyon Conley. Malik Hooker went first round. Marshawn really? went first round. Damian Arnett went first round. Uh, Okuda went first round. Man, this is sick. How is the Honey Badger uh, these days? He's with the. Uh, He's with the Saints now. He is just, he? he just right, signed with I'm the Saints. I'm glad to hear he's, he's doing, still hanging in he's there. He's doing well for himself. Now, yeah. now here's he's the, the highest rated safety in Madden this year. All right. Here, oh, wow. We, cool. we, we got to take a look at this. We're, so this is, they have top 10 
they have a lot of top 10 draft picks. Well, let me see if they give me a, a list of these because I ain't got no time. To, okay, here we go. Uh, Patrick Peterson, um, Tyron Matthew, okay. Jamal Adams, okay. Tredavious White, mm. Morris Claiborne, Eric Reed, Dante Jackson, Jalen Collins, Jalen Mills, Greedy Williams. Uh, gonna be a stud. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Uh, I mean, look, I don't know nothing. These dudes undrafted. All These right, undrafted. that's still that's a pretty nice that's list. A, that's a decent list. That's a very list, nice though. list. That is a uh, decent list. Not, and plus, they got what's, what's the kid from this year? Uh, you know who I'm talking about. Um, I do not. The kid from uh, the, 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 they just got dropped. Oh, Stingley. Derek, Derek, Derek Stingley. Stingley. Yeah. Third overall pick. Boom. What you mean? Jeff Okuda went third overall two years but ago. But we ain't seen Okuda. Yeah, he's been hurt. It's we been, ain't yeah. seen uh, him. Jeff, <laughs> hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. It, it's time, bro. You, you, uh, you, you, this, this one of them make it or break it. You, oh, you, my goodness. You, 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 was, you, you got to do something. Man, homie. <laughs> I, 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 two years ago, for you sure, was a man. He was hurt. He been hurt for two years, though. Hey, I will say this: <laughs> Are you guys arguing or agreeing right now? No, I'm having a hard time. It's both. Okay, it's both. All right, let's make it. But sure. let's not act like when they get to the league, everybody balling. Because there's a there's there's, there's a Eli. Uh, Apple. Eli Apple had the best season ever last year. Uh, so you talking, talking about the guy one, that went to the Super Bowl? That was last one year. year. <laughs> about, that was one done. Some year. people can't say that. Now <laughs> what's the, what's up, boy? Just one year in the what's Super Bowl for the Raiders. Was it was his name? Damian Arnett? Oh uh, yeah. Oh he just he going through some things right now. Yeah, he yeah. going through yeah, yeah, he, he going yeah, through yeah, some yeah, right. We gotta reach out. We gotta really put yeah. an arm around him because he I'm something it's just not right. I don't yeah. understand. Like he I'm like he What's was the not dish? Like that. What's the dish? He uh, he just got arrested for the second time in six months. He yeah. got caught with some powder. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I, yeah. I, I we, will. We gotta, we gotta really put bad. an arm around him. There, it's it's not good. I will say this, and, and, and there's there, the thing. The most impressive thing about Ohio State is this: is is the top five people that they got. You really could call Ohio State defensive in you, right? Like if you think about it, Shoot, like three names off the top: Chase, you, Nick, and Joey. <laughs> back to back to back. You, then, <laughs> then you got Will Smith. Yeah, Will. Um, they got. They, Man, um, this Vernon is... Golston was a monster back then, too. He went first round. Yeah, we got a DD coming on in a sec, so we're going to do top five real quick okay. while we wait for a DD. She's joining us right after player availability for Browns Camp. But as always, our Ultimate Five is sponsored by Roundstone Insurance. Roundstone offers a affordable, quality health care for everybody for more than a decade. Roundstone Insurance has been saving small and mid-sized businesses money up to 20%. Yet yeah, 20%. Contact us today to learn how you can get great health care benefits that your employees will love. And save money too. And Aditi's getting ready, so we're gonna run through this pretty quickly. But today's Anthony's birthday. Oh, hey! Anthony! There you go. Twenty-five, bro? Anthony. Oh, what a s- twenty-five today. So in honor of Anthony's birthday, we're gonna run through the five best athletes who aren't Anthony. The boy working on his birthday. Working on his birthday. Who share her birthday? So his birthday, excuse me. Look how depressing so, that corner that he is in is. It's on his birthday and it's so sad behind him. <laughs> it, it is the corner. We're limited space back here. All right, right. I understand. All right, so let's go through the five best athletes before we get to Aditi. Number five, how about Tyson Gay, world champion sprinter from mm, back in the day. Oh yeah. All right, okay. nice, good. He got all right. He got a thousand. It's actually a very athletic on. birthday, by the way. Anthony missed out. He, he now we don't know that we've never seen him. Anthony is May, a we don't know. Player. He might be a good athlete. He, said, uh, he Anthony says he averaged thirty six games, thirty six saves a game in high school because his defense was trash. Oh, that's I was, ridiculous. I was going to say that was good. I'll be mad Anthony, at have you defense. ever touched the rim? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, he's got up. Billy Hoyle. Who else is on this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to keep it moving. Number four. How about a uh, Super Bowl champion MVP, Doug Williams? Oh, share a birthday with Doug Williams, Anthony. Congratulations. Yeah, respectable. Doug, Doug, All right. Williams, that's, right. That's huge. The Who else? Very respectable. This day throwback, but another legend of the game. Take it, Anthony. Do your job, Anthony, on your birthday. Bob Cousy. Mm. The Coos. Hey, that's bro. a big one, that Anthony. Congratulations. One. <laughs> he got cheerleaders. And he only number three? Yep. Oh, uh-huh. there, listen, there, there's some great athletes coming. I, oh, hope, I hope Eli Apple on this list. That was, yep, this, was, this was this uh, was back Bucks. when, right before weight training really took off for NBA. I feel like I could give Bob Cousy buckets. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he's just, he's vulnerable at that point. I think Did I we just missed that. Who was that teaser? You just gave yeah, us a teaser, teaser of Brett yeah, Hall. Bro. Let's take it full. <laughs> that here. was such a Brett Hall tease. <laughs> Shout out to Brett Hall. Hockey Blues. legend Brett Hall. Oh yeah. Hall of Famer. We all know. know it. I don't know nothing about. Bh, it. that's what we called him back in the day. <laughs> Come on. 
Come on, man. All right, who's number one? Eli Apple. It's better than Eli Apple. Woo! Oh, yeah, yeah. That is a great one, right? Honestly. What an athletic birthday yep. for our boy yeah, Anthony. If you think about it, the personality types are identical between yeah. Anthony and Deion Sanders. They're both electric, wow. both double threats. <laughs> he shares a birthday with the greatest corner to ever play. That's game. fantastic, Anthony. I'm Congratulations jealous. and happy birthday. So it's his birthday. We did get cake for Anthony, but through right. COVID protocols, we can't eat cake altogether. So what a fun a what a fun himself. day it is for you near that stack of paper back there on your birthday <laughs> with a mask on with a cake you can't eat. Happy birthday, Anthony. Anthony, oh yeah! <laughs> Get you some pure. Uh, and let's uh, now that we've gone over Anthony's birthday <laughs> list. So sad. The amazing birthday list of August 9th. Let's bring on our favorite non-birthday person in the world, Aditi, live from Browns Camp. What's up, Aditi? Hey! What up, Aditi? There she well, is. Hi, Aditi. Uh, did, did we freeze Aditi again? <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. That's the look when when her husband spent that 500. <laughs> she, yeah, she looks <laughs> upset, that's for certain. What? You did what? Uh -huh. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what a what? what? <laughs> oh, who? Aditi's back. We got it. Oh, him. hi, Aditi. Hey. <laughs> Aditi, are you near the place where you get like free soda and chips and stuff like that? If so, can you bring some to the uh, into the building? <laughs> <laughs> VMix is not our friend today. No, it's not, not ideal. No, it's not <laughs> ideal. VMix does not like Anthony's birthday. VMix hates Deion Sanders. You know, it's okay. I was I, I was at Brown's camp, bro. And Didi was just moving around, just moving, just moving people yeah. out the way, just just walking around, just being a Didi. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We're gonna do this. I'm like, you got the whole setup out here. <laughs> She's in charge. Yeah, she's just running the whole. No show. doubt. I know. It was nice of her to try and spend gotta, time with I, us. I need yeah. to get to a practice, man. Yeah. It's fun. It, it, I got to I got to really deep out there. I'm about to ask one of my I'm about to ask Denzel, "Hey, put me on the friends and family list." Hey, you going to try to be up in a little tent up there? Put me on the friends and family list. With like the golf dads <laughs> yeah. drinking Miller Lights can, uh, in the middle I, of the I day. I need to see some to get the good action. Let me mm -hmm. get close. <laughs> hey, man, look, man. I, so uh, so okay, let's talk about this Tyvis. Like so we are going to wait to get a DD on. Now, you Played in the league, right? Did mm -hmm. anybody get it twisted and be like, oh, you in the league and was trying to do you like, oh, yeah, I'm not working no more. Like, <laughs> like your people's like, oh, Tyvus done made it and they actually oh! crazy. Like, Tyvus done made it and, and they asked for exorbitant so, requests and you had to be like, hey, bro, I really mm -hmm, ain't got so, that. So, I really ain't. So, this is the thing. The good news is, it's not good news, but the good news is I went undrafted. Oh, okay. So, my, my, my signing bonus was $12,000 from Seattle. Right. So, I ain't make it. Right. I, I ain't, when the money, when the checks came in, they was what they was. Yeah. 15, 16,000 a week. So, people try, people already knew. First of all, they knew I, I set them straight. I ain't the one. You like, like you, you had, you had gave the speech. We ain't going for that. All right. <laughs> I'm not going for that. And they tell you when you, as a rookie, they tell you like, Say no, like, <laughs> like they literally sit all the rookies down and say, "Y'all gotta learn to say no." Yeah, and they said the hardest person to tell no is your mother. Yeah, <laughs> they were my family, and, and for a long time <laughs> yeah. that was a fact. Yeah, but then one day my mama said something, asked for something, I'm just like, "No, I'm not doing it." Yeah, and I promise you, from that moment on. No, 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 don't mm -hmm. even ask me. So, yeah, I told my mama no, so no. Like, like, <laughs> like, was it a point where you was just like? All right, man, I'm going to be out of here. Look, I'm going to be looking crazy. I can't, I can't. People just asking me for everything. <laughs> Stuff they ain't never asked you for. Like, yeah, dog, uh, you know, when you going to throw me a birthday party and give me that car? Man. Both? Yeah, I'll give you a cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, I throw you a little bit of money, but you, listen, they, I'm telling you, G, you got to set them straight. Like, I'm not going for none of that. Like, mm -hmm. don't even ask me for nothing crazy like that. It's too hard. It's hard for black people, right? Like, it's hard. No, it's, because it, you want to help. It's hard. Yeah, you like, wanna, like, I want to help, but like, don't ask me for something that you can't ask the next person. Like, that's ridiculous. That is one of the comforting things about being relatively unaccomplished, though, is the number of people. No, not a lot of people hit me up for much, <laughs> which is nice because everybody just kind of knows. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, he probably has a cool extra thou on him. Yeah, like, that, that, guy, talking about? That, is, that guy from the news who, like, goes to Medina when somebody grows a really big pumpkin to, to check out that pumpkin. That's my job as a reporter, so, just so like, you guys know. Like, it's sometimes it's crazy. Hey guys, we got a Didi. I love oh, she's back. Tyvis, you're back this week. I want some training camp stories from you, but we have a oh, Didi in a new location, maybe not by the snacks, but we do <laughs> yeah, have a Didi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a Didi. I didn't get to uh, eat any of the snacks. 
Guys, uh, my stomach is growling. Hey, right, listen, I, I'm hungry too. Don't tell me. Don't yeah, tell I'm my about stomach to say, that. Yeah, don't need uh, that. We, we, we want to get right off into it, man. First of all, you're at training camp. Are you excited for your first preseason game on Friday? How does it feel? What, what, what are you feeling like? Um, I'm getting as many stories as I possibly can, and I'm really, really, really pumped. I'm also a little anxious. I'm anxious for a number of reasons. I'm anxious that I'll actually get there because air travel has been such a nightmare and I have to fly a connection to Jacksonville. And I'm also anxious that I have the stories that keep our viewers engaged. Mm. You, I I you've been getting these stories oh. and obviously you're probably, I know you want to save them for the game, as is your right. Uh, in case anybody doesn't know, Aditi is going to be doing, or she's actually doing the preseason games, which is huge, and we're very proud of you, and we're excited for you. Um, but there's, you probably got some lousy stories, too, that you have no intention of using uh, on the, you were, <laughs> there's kind of boring ones about, you know, air travel. <laughs> Can we have one of the lousy stories that you're not, sa you're not um, saving for, uh, for, that, for that game? Bitch. Let me see. I just talked to Chase Winovich. I don't oh. think that he really gave me... Oh, you know what? I got into this huge conversation with Demetric Felton about Star Wars and who oh, his great. favorite character is. Star... Yeah, he loves Star Wars. Favorite character? And... Yeah, go ahead, guess. I have no clue who Demetric Felton's favorite Star Wars <laughs> character is. Okay, so Demetric Felton, I'm, really quickly, right? He I'm... is both a wide receiver and a running back. Right. He started... No, this is the answer we all needed. I know. <laughs> play to play wide. Ah. She's coming back. Basically, last year went from room to room. Why? Wide receiver room. He will take some running back reps today, even though he's played just slot receiver all at training camp so far. And his favorite Star Wars character is Darth Vader. Darth Vader, he's very deep and complicated. And if you think about it, Darth Vader has a dichotomy between good and evil that he deals with in the same way that Dimitri Felton must playing multiple positions. <laughs> and he has to, that's so good, Mike. And it's that story arc of he's yeah. Anakin Skywalker and he's good. And then all of a sudden something changes and where he turns to. And yeah, so... Um, we didn't get that deep into it, and I don't know that that's going to make the cut of my sideline broadcast, so you can have it. No, Maybe well, it does. That, if you know. want to use that take, we'd be re I'd be really honored if I had if we could kind of combo on that, and you don't even have to credit it or anything. I'd love to see oh, it Oh, I don't have to credit you? No, okay, I'd love not I at all. That. That's yours. That, uh, that's, that's totally yours. Sweet. Stick, sticking with, sticking um, with the Star Wars theme, you know how Yoda says stuff but never really even says anything? You're like, hold on, what did that really mean? Mm -hmm. um, Kevin Stefanski has a good way of doing that. Have you now kind <laughs> of uh, digested or, or kind of broken the code of what Kevin Stefanski means? And do you think Deshaun Watson will play at all on Friday? I do, actually. I think that we will see. Now, I don't know for certain, but my gut says that we will see a fair amount of Deshaun Watson because, let's be honest, he hasn't had any football action in, what, 19 months? Yeah. So regardless of how all of this plays out, there is – and by, set, by all of this, I mean – Whatever, we know that the NFL has appealed Sue Robinson's initial suspension of six games. We know that Peter Harvey has taken all of this under um, sort of consideration now at this point. Peter Harvey will eventually come out with something. He is Commissioner Roger Goodell's designee. Then, of course, the NFLPA could potentially go and appeal in federal court, and then we'll see what happens there. But up until now, Kevin Stefanski has been giving – the majority of first team reps to Deshaun Watson, that is because he is trying to get Deshaun Watson football and game ready. Part of that is getting him some actual game action. There are only three preseason games. Deshaun Watson, my expectation is, will play and will likely play more than just one series. So we will see him in some capacity. And as this whole process is ongoing. I don't know that Kevin Stefanski has another choice other than to try to get him ready. Aditi, the first uh, un unofficial depth chart came out mm -hmm. and I have some concerns <laughs> about it. I don't know how much I should read into it, but I've been hearing AJ Green's Not name ranting and raving all through the streets of Cleveland and he is like 
third on the depth chart. Will we see a lot of him? And with Denzel being out, what is how is that rotation going to be, if you can tell us? Of, okay, of course we will see him. And I'm laughing because I literally spent 10 minutes on the radio in Pittsburgh yesterday over the same exact thing because they are all up in arms that Devin Bush and Robert Spillane are being named the first team linebackers on this first depth chart. A preseason depth chart is put together for no other reason than the head coach is asked to do it. It's not like this is what we would expect week one of the season. They're putting names out there, and that's it. And I wouldn't really be significantly concerned. It's not how the game is actually going to play out. Just to your point, I don't think we're going to see Denzel Ward. Um, Mike Woods is a young receiver who I believe is going to make this team. But we're not going to see much of him either. David Bell has gotten back on the field, but just because of wherever it is that he's listed, it doesn't indicate necessarily how many snaps he's going to get at receiver. So I wouldn't be overly concerned by what the depth chart says right now. And it's funny because I was just joking about Chase. I tried to get at him if we do see defensive coordinator Joe Woods put together a NASCAR package with three or four defensive ends who's the guy that's playing inside? And Chase is like, well, you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> so it's not like the depth chart is really giving anything away to any of us right now. Anyway. How did they get Kareem Hunt back on uh, on board in like two and a half seconds? Like, he, he, you know, he came out, he was a little <laughs> upset about that contract, and then he was just running after practice, really working hard, like, yep, uh, nothing happened here, nothing here to see. What happened and nothing in 48 to hours? I, isn't that great? And again, I'll bring up Pittsburgh because it was a conversation yesterday. Deontay Johnson pulled one of these hold-ins for several weeks where he did all individual drills and wouldn't do the team drills until he got his new deal. Meanwhile, Kareem Hunt lasts exactly two days. And I don't, you know, guys, I have no idea. I don't know if AB said to him, Kareem, stop this. It's not going to work. I don't know if Kareem was like, okay, this is really boring. I don't want to do this. I don't know what the genesis of that was. I, I just think that this is one of those situations where I appreciate and respect the fact that Kareem wants to create whatever leverage he can, that he wants to capitalize this very small window in which he can make sort of peak earnings, where he can make the most amount of money that he can, but nothing ever happens in a vacuum. And so it's not that... It, does he owe the Browns because they took a chance on him when nobody else would, when his hometown team said, okay, come, we'll make a home for you? You could say that, but it's not like Kareem Hunt wasn't here working really hard for the Browns too. You know, you could argue that, yes, the Browns took a chance on him, and yes, he has repaid them with his play and his effort and who he has been. I just, how much money can the Browns devote to the running back room? Right. And that's where I say nothing happens in a vacuum. I think that if Nick Chubb wasn't being paid what Nick Chubb is being paid, then maybe Kareem Hunt could get more money. But no one team can put that much money in this one position of running back. And Jerome Ford, the young rookie, has been catching the ball really well. And Dearness Johnson is, I'd argue, the best number three running back in the NFL. So I'm not saying those guys together are Kareem Hunt, but... The Browns will be okay if they don't have Kareem Hunt, and that doesn't really go in his favor either. I'm glad you brought that up. So it's the name that's floating around as of today, Roquan Smith, the linebacker. Yeah. Can, you, can you see them making yeah. the trade Kareem Hunt for, for Roquan Smith? Oh, did you just put that out there? Yeah. Is that an idea? You like Stop that? You, you, like, that you, you like that, didn't you? <laughs> I do kind of like that idea. That makes me actually think I should text some of my friends in Chicago. Hey, what do you think? Because they don't have any star power at running back in Chicago. Yeah. At all. High, com high commodity. Uh, you know, he can get the deal that he thinks he deserves. You know, we can upgrade the line. I, I will say position. this, though. I, I think... <laughs> I think the Browns like their linebackers. I think the Browns really like their defense. And when you hear this defense say that its goal is to be the number one defense, it doesn't feel crazy. You know, a year ago, their goal was to be top five. And they were top five. And it was a little sneaky that this was a top five defense. But you think about all these guys being back together year two and the complexities that they're able to add because they've been together and they've played all this time together. I don't know that that's a glaring hole. I don't know that you go and chase someone who obviously wants a new deal and commit a lot of money 
when, I mean, who, who are you unhappy with? Why do you want to make that move? Or is it just to add as many great players as you can? Oh, yeah. I, I'm a defensive player, so I'm always going to uh, look to upgrade <laughs> add more at the defensive def- players. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but don't you kind of want to see what, what these linebackers give you? Yeah, we did. We already seen that. <laughs> listen, I, I have, listen, no, <laughs> Didi, I, I really, I compared this If you team. want, I'll go in that building and I'll go tell <laughs> AB that this is what you feel. You, you tell, and I'm gonna you, have to you, you tell, you, you go in there and you tell AB that if you're looking for some safety help and you need awesome. a guy who's better at the position, <laughs> you know a guy that's at the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show that, you know what, don't even have to teach me to play because I still know it like the back of my hand. So, you know, you just need a guy to come yeah, in, like, you know, I'm in good shape, ready was, to go. Have you, he he you would cold call anybody, wouldn't you? The I'm just saying. I, literally, I I know the people like the back of my hand. I can really right. go in there and play no, right now. We were just saying how you needed more jobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me he has to move on this fast. <laughs> Aditi, how do you think uh how do you think the Browns handled um the Kareem Hunt situation? I, I like pretty they pretty much like shot that down cold, didn't they? And do you think that was a Wait. Factor? What was happening? It was tell me, tell me, and then I, you froze on That's me. Okay. I don't know what's going on with the VMix, Mikey. That's okay. Aditi, I was just asking, how do you think the Browns handled that Kareem Hunt situation? I don't know. I mean, I think AB just told him this isn't going to work. Like, this isn't going to get you anywhere. Right. They pretty much, like, shot it down cold, though. I like the, do, you, do you like how they didn't humor him at all and didn't try and do anything about it? Um, I think that goes both ways, right? Like if you're an old school, if you're running the team, then you're happy that that's how it went. If you're seeing it from the player side, you hope that there's a little bit of respect for the business end of it and that there is very little leverage. And so what can you do? I don't know. I don't really, you know, this is, this is way above my pay grade, quite frankly. I don't know how I would play that. On the one hand, I sit here and I say, you signed a contract. And whether you like the contract or not, this is your contract. And you are required to fulfill the end of your contract. On the other hand, I would say, you know, the market is constantly changing. And I understand trying to maximize whatever earning potential you possibly can. But again, I also, I think a lot about fit and happiness. And it's not always about money. Right. Like sometimes being in the right place where you enjoy coming to work every day, where you are utilized in a valuable way that may in some ways extend your career, where you are featured, where you are respected, and where you feel your team has potential, all of those things are worth more than potentially getting more money in Houston. Didi, uh, give me, give me, um, see, I'm going to do this every time you come on. I want... <laughs> Somebody we should be spot shadowing on offense that you've seen in training camp. You say, you know what? He might have a pretty, pretty big day, or he might have a nice play or two in Jacksonville. Can you give me an offensive player and a defensive player that you're watching or the audience should watch um, that you've seen from camp? Can I give a special teams player? Can I say Cade York? Yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, you can say that. Say Cade York as many times as you want. (laughs) <laughs> Just because I feel like that is such an underrated position. And if anybody should appreciate having not only competency, but okay. So, you know, what's really funny about this, not only competency, but someone who can excel and who has moxie, then that's, you should appreciate the kicker. I'm excited to see Cade York do it in a game. I just talked to Kate about this, and he said that he was yelling at everybody to put him down, that he thinks he actually missed this field goal. And he was like, guys, stop making such a big deal out of it. I don't know the truth because I wasn't really there to see it, (laughs) but I appreciate the honesty. I do appreciate the um, honesty there. And yeah, he's been really, really, really good, really money. He's gone down to First Energy Stadium to get a sense of the winds there. Obviously, you won't really see that until the weather gets colder and how all of that changes. But he's not afraid of anything. I, many, I really I'm trying like to it. think, Aditi, do you remember how many times this team franchised their kicker, Phil Dawson? That's how important a kicker is to <laughs> Cleveland? Feel. I don't know. I mean, I think this could be a kid that you have to pay after three years, just like For the real? Bengals will probably have to pay 
Evan McPherson after three years. Oh, we I mean, you have no, look, look at how much of a difference Justin Tucker has made to the Ravens. Yeah, I was actually just talking about this with Cade York. Like, if you look at the signage outside the Ravens building, you have Lamar Jackson and you also have Justin Tucker. Mm -hmm. You know, and you think about the Bengals yep. a year ago, Evan McPherson went 14 for 14 that, in the playoffs. He crazy. kicked the Bengals into the AFC title game when they were in Tennessee, and then he kicked the Bengals into the Super Bowl when they were in Kansas City. I mean, how can you say that that's not a valuable position? Totally. Kickers matter. Yep. <laughs> they do. Get that hashtag going. They are Get people. that hashtag going. Put, a, put it in the front yard. <laughs> hey, if punters are people, then kickers matter. Why not? Well, Didi, um, we appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Uh, I'll tell you what, VMix screwed up there a little bit. We'll take a responsibility for that, but you brought it home as always. Well, thank you. And I will see you guys Friday from Jacksonville, where I believe I will hopefully be joined by the fabulous Chris Rose, part That's of my awesome. there you go. booth. Yeah. Cool. Well, we look so forward we'll to it. So we'll have some fun then. We know you're busy, All right, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Take Bye. care. Thanks for having me. And hey, tell Tyvis I'm going to go talk to AB. Appreciate oh, you. Go Browns. I'll give you a percentage. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. That's tampering. <laughs> Uh, we, 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 we got said, he, he got 96 jobs. Hey, listen, he got 98. Hey, he does. He, well, you know, y'all got to quit. There. You got to go on Monster.com, get that hey, resume. You got to find, there. you got to find a tax loop or something. Uh, you got to give him the charity. Exactly. I, 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 I wish I had 96 jobs. Come on, roll it. <laughs> Should I go first? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Oh, you waited on you your. Know, you, that's you your screen. <laughs> <laughs> Bull got to come back so I can go back to my seat. <laughs> Final takes today is that uh, as the, as these two fellas keep joking around. Congratulating about, you about. about me having all these job offers. What they're referring to is that I have one been reached out by the Big Ten just to do a, a pregame show this uh, upcoming season. Um, that would be the Arkansas State game, so that would be good to be on that big stage with those guys. And then, as of yesterday, I was offered the job to be on the Browns radio Ooh. network where I can do pregame and postgame shows. So, I, I definitely am thankful and grateful for the opportunity yeah, to be man, able to sit that up young man. Yes, sir. Young man. with y'all and, and give my reaction and listen to y'all reactions after the game. So. Make sure y'all tune in and yes, God is good. Thank y'all. Yeah, Congratulations. Man. Congratulations. Appreciate you. By the way, Tybus, <laughs> he's a finalist um, for the S Curl Man of the Year as well. <laughs> yeah. You know, so make sure you'll get that S Curl. Make sure you get that beard, that dude. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor just to be nominated for Yeah, me. right, right. I'm becoming the last winner was George Jefferson. Here's right. uh, until you see the shirts. Until you, you got they got the beard looking good. <laughs> like <it's> crispy, <laughs> crispy. Now, my, my, my Mike, you got you probably got a package. What do you got? Here's my take, you guys. Um, we want you to know that we hear you, viewers. Uh, we watch when you're watching. We know when you tune out, and we have noticed that that happens oftentimes when we start talking about the Cleveland Guardians. Don't stop watching. Don't stop watching. <laughs> I just said the name of them. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We also notice that. By comparison, the numbers tend to stay high or go up when we're talking about Deshaun Watson. Now, we have to talk about the Guardians. It's an important part of Cleveland sports. We care about the Guardians, and we want to cover them as a responsible sports show. So we, here's the compromise that I came up with. When we're talking about the Guardians sometimes, if you guys are, in case you guys are getting bored, we're going to have a Deshaun Watson ticker at the bottom. There it is with Deshaun Watson facts that will <laughs> that will pop up now and again while we're talking about baseball so that you guys don't get too bored. Like then here's look at another fact here. Just let's look at another one. There you go. See, these will just keep cycling through like here. Let's practice right now. So obviously we had to say goodbye to Fran Mil Reyes this week. It's unfortunate. The big guy was a team favorite, obviously, but it was time for him to move on. Why? Well, it's just a matter of numbers, you guys. He's struck out 104 times in 280 plate appearances, walking only 14 times. He was batting 213 <laughs> at the time that we let him go. Nine home runs and 28 RBIs. Now, on a team that obviously is 
not looking for any or is lacking for for sure in power hitting. It's hard to let go of somebody who hit that many home runs over the last couple of years. All right, you get the idea, everybody. So as long as we're talking about baseball, we're always going to have that option for you so that you never have to be far away from Deshaun Watson gossip and trivia for even a second, you precious little darlings. That's my take. <laughs> I like it. That was, <laughs> like that was brilliant, Paul. Yeah, yeah. I like brilliant. Uh, the ticker works. It'll work. I, you know. Have that ready for when <laughs> Bull and Jay start going at it about right. like the minor leagues. Yeah, but listen, that's gonna listen. The first day back when they back, oh, they gonna have all kind of. You know, what yep. I was thinking about when I was on vacation. You know, I was thinking about when I was there. <laughs> for, me, for me, going to uh -huh. the Chicago yeah. Cubs. Oh right. my God! You know who I like? You know who I like at uh, at the Akron Ducks level? <laughs> like what? The, the Ducks. The Columbus Clippers got this great. There prospect. you go. See, there you go. Hey, you know, listen, <laughs> keep, I, I keep it coming through. I you tell you what, way. there's a catcher. He's at he's at single A right now. <laughs> there it is. He's in Albuquerque. Oh, oh you saying. got you're talking about uh, Thomas Pena. Oh uh, yeah, pa Pena. Thomas Pena. I, I, I thought he was a defensive guy, but he has a solid. You he's got a good strokes. He's a he can switch. Hit. Oh yeah, you know what? And right now we insert him in this lineup. Uh, right. Oh, oh who knows? God. We might be up there with the Yankees. Uh, but we need three more arms, medium arms. We yeah. Don't need, we don't need. Then we don't need a starter. It's like a long reliever and a second closer. See, it works great. We will have to probably get some more trivia facts in there. You have to see the same ones again. If and you again. have any fun Deshaun Watson trivia facts, yeah. send them to us on Wait Twitter, Instagram, and we'll yeah. include them UCSS there. UCSS at WKYC.com. Deshaun Watson's middle of that first name is not Deshaun for real. It's Derek, isn't it? <laughs> I know that, Tyvis. No idea. You know Tyvis. You know, you I just, know, you know we, we get aliases. You know every know every time we be born, you born. Yeah. Derek Watson. See how Watson. you can learn? See how you can learn more about Deshaun hey, Watson while listening to people talking about baseball? Right here on this show. Bush, take it away. I will say, so, you know, I really ain't got much. You know, what I do miss, though, sometimes you get a little older, man, and you get a little nostalgic, and, you know, when you hit 40 and you're almost 41, you know, you're, that, you're that generation that used to play video games and mm -hmm. have mm. friends and do things, right? So yeah. I was just sitting at home, and I was just like, man, I don't know what made me think that I was, like, some like 12 or 13 and I could get this off. I went and grab my remote control like I was going to pick up the game and just get on a dynasty of some sort <laughs> and realize that I have not touched the sticks in weeks. No skills. No, I, like it was like I picked up Madden. It was the Madden with with with, with 2018. I think Terrell Owens was oh, dear. Oh, like dear. the Hall of Fame pack. I said, this is terrible. Yeah, man. it's bad. And then so what I had to do is I had to just realize, man, like NCAA, I need you to come back. Oh, we're supposed yeah. to, eh? I need, listen, I would gladly give back my little $200 check that you had to cut everybody for illegally using our name and likenesses. Messed up. I'll tell you what, I'll gladly sign off my name and likeness one more time just to get a dynasty. I've been trying to get these receivers from Texas. I've been trying to get me a pipeline state. I really want to see my dudes make believe characters that I live vicariously through on the screen and mythical 40 times. I would love to do that after I leave the ultimate Cleveland sports show. Mm -hmm. It would probably end in the next divorce because I, I tend to, uh, you know, just not pay attention to any of my significant others, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I'm going to get that pipeline state of Texas and Florida and I'm going to take Kent State. Damn right. Damn near to the college football playoff. I'm going to compete <laughs> against old state. I'm going to compete at the top levels. I might even move change conferences. Mm. I've been trying to mm. get this off. And when I bring up the Heisman Trophy, it'll bring back the memories of being in the dorms, yeah. skipping classes, going to nothing, and lifting <laughs> weights. There you go. That's all we want in life. That's all I want. College football, NCAA 23. Help them out. I'm coming. We need to get that off. Big Nuggets, cool. what you got? Two things. Preview for tomorrow. We got Leroy, and we have Zach Jackson from The Athletic mm, making cool. his UCSS debut. It's Brad Tyvis and G. Bush in here. And we have kind of glossed over it earlier, but... I do want to give Anthony one more shout out. It is his birthday today, the hey. big 25. And what you guys see on air in UCSS is not what it is without this guy's hard work. He, he's not on camera as often as he should be. He doesn't have a mic, so he doesn't, he doesn't get to talk. Probably for the better. But Anthony does a great job back there. He deserves the birthday shout out. He does have a cake. We did not forget about Anthony. And for everyone at UCSS, Anthony, we wish you uh, a very happy 25th birthday. It's all downhill from here. Hell yeah. Hey. Well said, hey. boss. Happy we birthday. love you, Anthony. Yeah.
We love you, Anthony. Thanks for everything. Yeah, man. Yeah, so we, we go kick it, man. There it is. Thank so, you. So it's, look, dude, when we get sentimental, that happens. Right. It comes right. Too. <laughs> if you're giving people credit for being good human mm-hmm. beings, we know just that bores that you. Bottom. We know that bores you. Yeah, we don't want to hear none yeah. of that, man. C- Cavs talk. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Matter of fact, we might have to put that on all state talk, too. Whoa. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. There Thanks it is. Thanks for watching it. Yep, yep. Everybody. Uh, by the way, we'll go Bucks. Is what you want to say? It's 22 hours. 22. 22 hours. Yeah. I, why do I think I got to do the math every time? We'll see in 22 hours, folks. <laughs> it's the never same. Changes, it don't G. change. It's the same like, like, it's the same thing. <laughs> Just say 22. <laughs>